points of articulation. Hello and welcome. We've got the three points of articulation today based on the Survivor series. It's called the best of the best or final farewell. Uh, I'm joined as usual by Jonathan Fenton. And I'm thankful for being absolutely perfect. Lovely. <laughs> and uh, Adam, Han the wrestling man, Adam Hanslow. Hello, fellas. Hello, ladies. Should be more apt for you two. Yeah. No. <laughs> We go Survivor Series based. Um, yes, we're talking about the Survivor Series this week, which is um, obviously apt because we've got Survivor Series next next week, guys. So that's going to be our break it down segment. But next up, we've got no 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 news news world or <laughs> news. <laughs> Welcome back to News World Order. So we're going to fly straight over to Adam, who is uh, in our reveals department, because this week we're focusing quite a lot on the recent uh, ringside at home reveals that happened. So Adam, kick us off. Yeah, ab absolutely loads of reveals over the past week or so. Um, we've got them all on the Three Points of Articulation Facebook page, if you want to go check that out for us. Uh, give us a like, give us some reviews as well. Uh, let's kick off straight away with the Ultimate Editions. So we've had four of them revealed uh, so far. Uh, Austin, Blur, Hogan and Wyatt. Uh, I think the obvious pick of the bunch for me has got to be the MWO Hollywood Hogan. What's your thoughts on this line, guys? Yeah, it's knocked out the park with that one. I don't think they could have added anything more, to be honest. So, yeah, I, I no complaints absolutely needed in the collection. Yeah, I think this one's going to sell like hotcakes over here, isn't it? Or as well as in the in the US. I think they had the Storm Collectibles one, which is um, not going to be as, as sought after as this one, I don't think. So, yeah, I think it's going to fly off the shelves. It's going to be tough to get. I, I wonder if, you know, with Smith's being a bit more selective with what they order, whether they're going to order this one back in. I know they stopped doing the Ultimates, but it could be one that gets them back into it. You'd hope so. Yeah, yeah I mean, e even the current ones, um, d I don't think they're massively in demand, but they're still quite difficult to get for a reasonable price. Your Shawn Michaels and your Brock Lesnar's, um, so yeah. these ones, because obviously you've got the, the, the Fiend and, um, and Hogan, uh, and an Austin, which is quite rare, to be honest, considering how big he is. Um, an elite Austin isn't, isn't the most easy th of things to get. Um, so I, I think it's going to be going to be quite sought after and quite difficult to get. Sure. So what was the other ones? The Fiend? Uh, Fiend, Fiend Hogan. Hogan, Austin and Flair. What's your thoughts on the Fiend? I haven't really seen much of that one. Um, for me, it's, it, it looks good, but it, it does come with the belt, um, which is going to be the big add-on for a lot of people. Um, but it's very, very, very similar. I mean, the Fiend-wise, there's only really worn one outfit so far. He's got lots of personalities, but as the Fiend, there's only really been one outfit. So there's there's not many places that they can go at the moment for the number of figures they seem to be thinking about. I think I would, yep. have, I would have quite liked to have seen um, this did an ultimate Bray Wyatt, where you could be the Fiend, could be Swamp Bray, and he could be Funhouse Bray. Um, Ooh, that would be... I don't think... Other than a three pack, you couldn't really do that. Yeah, no, lot no. You couldn't mm. just add clothing on because he wears tights, different sort of things that you wouldn't be able to get in soft goods or. No, it's just have, a bit of, have some tights. A three, pack, a three pack could be a good idea. It would definitely sell at least. Yeah, it would definitely sell. Um, a, lot, a lot of any Bray Wyatt stuff seems to sell at the moment, doesn't it? So even the the older stuff for Bray Wyatt you seem to pop up on the secondary market if you were looking for it. Well, I can confirm that the old Bray Wyatt's don't really sell too well, to be honest. <laughs> not, for, not for any decent money, anyway. No. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. yeah. I think the flare one, um, the flare is, is it's the blue trunks flare, isn't it? I remember Purple. It. Purple. Purple. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be quite 
not be as sought after as the the Bray and the and the Hogan, but I think it's still going to be a sought after piece. Have we seen what the flare comes with yet? Because the picture that I saw just just showed the belt, but surely that can't be it. It's He's coming with a pink robe, right. and probably you would think the the big gold as well. Yeah, the, the obviously renders can't show soft goods. So normally, if it doesn't come with much, it means that it's coming with some form of soft goods. Yeah, I really like. It. I'm pleased it went down in a, a, an attire that it hasn't been released with. Although there is a, a basic already, but yeah, that's a basic. Good choice of colour for flair. And the um, the Austin, I think, is a must-have. Um, uh, yeah, I think it, it, like the way that they're sort of going down that route of having one current star, one previous star, and then having someone in the Attitude Era in there as well, which is always good. Well, it's the first time they've veered towards not having a current one, so there's two legends in the mm. Flair and Austin together. Um, what actually comes with Austin, do you recall? And the, the, the jacket, um, a load of hands, no middle finger hands, sadly. Um, Which jacket is it? Silver? Yeah, silver. All right. Silver one. Imagine, well, you'd, you'd hope there'd be some beer cans and stuff with it, but um, with the fact that it's kid, all kid-friendly, it's questionable, isn't it? Probably not. Mm, maybe a tiny Zamboni or something. <laughs> well, definitely not. <laughs> I think from what I saw, it's following the kind of routine of the other um, Ultimate Editions, where for me personally, one head is generally a lot stronger than the others. There's, uh, yeah. I think they put a lot more focus into one of the heads uh, and not the others, unfortunately. So there's a, there's a, a not very good one in that one, I think. Mm. Yes, I probably should have looked at this before we started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll send them over to you. It's fine. Um, and then elites wise, we saw some more images of um, the elites that they've released. Um, the Rumble ones, I think, box wise, stands out to me. I think we saw Titus O'Neil, Umaga, Old Warrior, and another Stone Cold. Um, I think the box seems to look good on the outside. Um, what do you guys think about the boxes and the figures for those? I think the boxes are very similar to the last boxes, um, if, I'm, if I'm right there. Um, but it didn't make me want to buy them just because of those boxes. Um, they weren't that readily available, to be honest. No, that Lashley is still really hard to pick up. Um, the figures themselves, I think Umaga is a really good choice because there was only one other place to go. We spoke kind of previous episode about how he could be different. And he yeah. definitely is with the kind of red three-quarter length tights. So I think that's quite a good one. Um, Titus O'Neil, um, I might not be 100% correct on this, but I think his T-shirt's made up uh, that he comes with. I don't think I've ever seen him wear that T-shirt about the world slide, um, but it, it's a good choice for a Rumble box set. Uh, and the other two are, are what they are, your standard Austins and Warriors. Good idea. Um, what I did notice is that Warrior, I think it is actually from the 1988 Rumble, because I stuck it on for my three-year-old to have a little watch of a bit of all wrestling. I noticed the warrior came in looking like that. And I always thought it was 1990, but maybe it wasn't, or the, very similar at least. So it's a good back. figure. It's so it's back. Did you know that the 88 Rumble was not the first ever Rumble? Did you know that? Here we go. Well, there was a, there was originally, there was one in 87 that they um, only sold 1,000 tickets for. So it wasn't financially viable to have that as the first one. Um, so they put 88 as the first ever one. Um, but it never happened then? It happened, but it never happened. Um, they had the rumble in it, but it was never deemed as the first ever one. One by the one man gang. So, the... Interesting. Well, I mean, before you cut me off there, the Warrior comes <laughs> with the first release of the Yellow Intercontinental Championship belt. So first release of that, which is good for some collectors. I already have one nicely painted by my mate Rob Passmore. So I've already got one, but it's always good to have another. It is. Uh, can't have too many, can you? Um, you've got the Rumble ones. You've got um, obviously Elite 80 has been released in America. It's sort of been shipping as well as over here. Some places have had it. Um, side note on that, the Ricochet. Uh, when they first come out, the tattoo of the Ricochet was over the wristband, his sleeve tattoo. 
Um, yeah. Mattel have recently changed that. So now in the wild, they're popping up and, and they're fixed. So always a good side note. Um, 81 is coming relatively soon. I know they've been released over in America. Uh, ringside is shipping them, but obviously when we enter, we normally have to wait about six weeks, two months over here. Remind us some down. Sorry, give us a rundown of who's in Series 81. So we got Bianca Belair, uh, Stunning Steve, uh, Andrew Dawkins, Montez Ford, The Rock, Shinsuke, who's the chase, and Mae Young. Uh, we covered them on the last episode. Yes. We had a look at the, um, the pictures for them in box. Um, we've then got Elite 82. Hold your horses, son. I have a little tidbit of news on the Elite um, 81 regarding stunning Steve Austin. Um, the guy from Mattel Steve was asked whether they're going to get a Pullman in soon or another release of the WCW tag belt. The reply was, if you want two tag belts, buy two of these. So there is no upcoming release of Pillman or another release of the tag belt with anyone else. Don't know whether that's like a little ploy to get you to buy two or, or whether it's actually true. I would imagine it's actually true. I can't see him lying about it. Yeah, they, they, won't, they won't have any plans for the most recent future with it, and it will have been done on purpose to get people to buy two. It's a good job I've got two coming. Oh, interesting. Um, I think the secondary market for the tag belt is probably going to be quite, quite big, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so is the demand for Austin, so it'll balance out. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, can I carry on? Is that right? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so Elite 82, we've got Alexa Bliss, uh, Jerry Lawler, which I'm quite keen on, um, Rob Gronk, which I'm not very keen on, uh, John Morrison, uh, Finn Balor, Keith Lee, who is the chase, and the target exclusive is the British Bulldog. Yes. Whether we like or not. Um, luckily, we got it in Smith's over here, so I pre-ordered a couple of those. Maybe try and hunt down a dynamite head, stick on top, see if that looks okay. Another thing with the Alexa Bliss, exactly same situation as Austin. No planned release of another figure with the women's tag title. So if you want two, buy two Alexas. Um, I imagine they're going to release someone with, with the second belt at some point in the future. Well, yeah, it'll definitely come, but yeah. not anytime soon, apparently. Well, they think you paid so, a hot potato with it. So the um, pictures of the Keith Lee one, and it looks like they've absolutely nailed the head scan on Keith Lee. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if it's exactly the same as the basics. I've not got the basic, um, but the head scan looks perfect from the pictures that I saw. And the body was pretty decent as well. The body was a really good shape for him. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the head scan, the basics, really, really good as well. Um, but yeah, I agree on the, on the elite. I think it's just that one step further. Um, so yeah, I think it's be quite interesting to see how that works out. And it's the chase, so imagine he's he's going to be quite sought after as well. Both both variants. Yes, the kids will want him. Um, let's so move on to series eighty three. We've got Sasha Banks. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, King Corbin, who looks spectacular, and uh, Edge, who is the chase, and the Walmart exclusive is Michael Hayes. Um, I mean, Michael Hayes, I was not going to get him over here. I think he's going to fit into a lot of, well, mainly your collection, Johnny, um, of sort of the 80s side of things. I mean, would you be spending about 35 quid to get that in? Are you going to be picking him up? Yeah, more than likely a 35 quid job from um, Wrestling Trader or Wrestle HQ or Wrestle Box or any of those guys that will get them in or big pop, big pop shop. Um, it's a shame we do have to spend this sort of money on figures like that, um, but it is what it is. You see how those things go with the British Bulldog and Smiths, maybe they'll decide to get those in on a regular basis afterwards. You never know. Have we got any idea what Michael Hayes comes with? So I've got no idea on that one. I think it's a cape type robe, something like I think that. I think it'll be the Freebirds one or the one yeah. they have on his own. 
It would be a free birds, but won't have any sort of confederate flag, obviously. <laughs> I think it, I think it's um, yeah, like a, a robe or a cape and some sunglasses, I believe. Um, for, any, for any hardcore WCW fans, there that'll be a double purchase as well for one for Jimmy Garvin. Mm. Did, did Jimmy Garvin ever wear that sort of attire with his though? He definitely wore a, a robe. Um, I don't. I don't think it was the same as. as yeah, as I think that his is more of like a. His more of the eighties type, whereas with um, Gordy and Robert. Right. And so, he, he reverted to like tights in the WCW era, like you would see with the the Galoobs. So yeah, maybe so imagine it being kind of like the Jack's classic three pack one then with that cape. Yes, yes, I would think so. That's what I'm thinking. Mind you, I think I only owned the Galoob, who, as we discussed before, went in goal for my uh, Hasbro football team. So, um, Quality keeper. Well, only on the right side, though. Only on the right side. On the left side was an exposed area. Um, yeah. Elite 84, we've got Rhea Ripley. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh, no, we, there we go. He's gone for <laughs> um, let's go with um, Corbin I mean you mentioned Alice smashed it out of the park with him and we've obviously got our one king to rule them all feature comes with his uh, king attire I think that's an amazing figure head scan perfect accessories perfect um, Dusty Rhodes for me is the only real place they could go now with the Dusty Rhodes it's not for me it's not one that I'll be getting but it's worth a mention with this being a Survivor Series episode because it is from the Survivor Series 90 I think is it um, with the red red dots um, and the hat, um, which, you know, fair play to Mattel. They've, they've gone somewhere a bit different with him. Yeah, it is around that era. I'm not sure if it's exactly the one worn at the show, but he was wearing that from late 90 to early 91, which is, for WWF-wise, it's probably the only other way to go. Unless the only different sort of attire you could do is like a 70s one with the red that you would see with the old Jack's classic or even like a an NWO type manager situation. But it's it's still a bit surprising that Dusty Rhodes is with the WWE, knowing Cody and Dustin are with AEW. I thought it might have been a good thing to try and get Dusty into the AEW line to try and kick off a, a legend series with them. I think I think they might have well, say patched up, but uh, obviously, Cody is now called Cody Rhodes. So, obviously, WWE released the surname Rhodes to him um, on there. So, there might have been some sort of deal that happened between the two. But um, I imagine it's just been a long standing Legends deal that hasn't run out yet. Hmm. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be as simple as that. Um, I'd quite like to see what was, what was his manager called? Um, Sapphire. Sapphire. That's the one, Sapphire. I'd quite like to see a figure of Sapphire. So, so I've got the polka dots, Dusty. I, think it good. Uh, I doubt that's ever going to happen, but it'd be, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. Get a sapphire so, in there. We need, we need so a slick as well. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about the King Corbin. How long has it been since he shaved his hair off? It's been nearly two, three years, right? It took a while for that figure to get out. Well, there was, um, I say uproar, but there was a bit of. Uh, heat last time because they did a running change on a different one in the series but Corbin I think it was the last basic he had he hadn't yeah. had hair for about six months at that point and they still kept him with the long hair yeah. um, in there. I so. think it was like the short hair was like, like a really short mm. buzz cut which he had for a week before he shaped it all off yeah strange a bigger release, so yeah it was a strange one that but it has took a while um, and also worth mentioning that this is the only series with five figures that has ever been. I think they've always had six, plus Chase and special editions and that sort of thing, but only five in the baseline. Based on Robertine Dream? That was the the, the rumoured six man, so yes, being cut, I guess. Because um, there's still well, so there's Kushida, which hasn't been placed yet. Um, I know Candice LeRae is going to a Series 87, um, but Kushida hasn't been placed into a series yet, so I'm thinking maybe they replace if, it, if it's ready with that. Um, they, need to, they need to decide how to fit Kushida in a place in the actual show first. 
I believe uh, Fig Pop Shop, Steve said the Kushida was 85. Right, okay. That makes sense because there's only four in there. That makes sense. Oh, yes. Shall we move on to 85? Oh, 84. We should go 84 first. Um, well, I'm getting confused. By way oh. of maths. Um, yeah, so Rhea Ripley, Angel Garza, uh, Buddy Murphy, Seamus, and, well, the recently released, um, in a physical sense, Selena Vega, um, which I think with that, well, I think it's too late. I think they, they can't, because the schedule for Elite 83 is for just before Christmas in America, or the holidays, as they call it, um, which means that 84 will currently be in production. Um, so I think it's going to be too late to, to pull to pull Vega. Yeah, she'll still get a figure, at least. They're not going to pull that and not make money off it. Mm. Definitely. It's a um, strange one, that. But uh, Angel Garza, what's um, your guys' view on Angel Garza? Have we seen any um, more images? Because I remember seeing it at, in the summer where it was no. just like a render. We still only got the renders um, from 84 onwards. I think even 83, we only just got the renders uh, for some of them. We may have discussed that one before, but yeah, it's going to be a cracking figure, especially with uh, removable pants and stuff there. Yeah, there's there's no more to really add until we know what comes with that one. Yeah, well, I think yeah. that's the, they only released the, the removable, um, we'll say trousers because we're English. Pants just sounds a bit Benny Hill, doesn't it? Um oh. Season four, Jamie. <laughs> uh, right, so have you guys got any tidbits to add in for 84? No. No, I don't know too much about them ones. No. no so 85 is going to be, looks like it's going to be, a, a, well, a decent series, probably the best one complete-wise since we've had since 81, I'd say. So Alistair Black, uh, Liv Morgan, K- uh, Killer Cross, Karen Cross, and The Undertaker. No news on the exclusive for that one, but... Um, that's the four. Is there a Seamus in that? I thought that's a four, just covered him. Oh, okay. no, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so that's 85. So that's the black. I think the figures for wise for that always sells. Uh, Liv Morgan character change, she's got the black that she wore for about two months. Um, Cross, I think it's gonna sell. Uh, Undertaker, well, it's gonna be his farewell figure, which we thought the last one was, but probably not. Um, so what do you guys think of those four? Liv Morgan surprises me on that one, um, that it's so late down the line, but they've kept that uh, that new version of Liv Morgan that, like you say, only came out for two or three months before she was put back with the Riot Squad. So you'd think with it being that far down the line, they might make a running change or something might happen to change that figure. I haven't seen it, but I don't think Liv Morgan's a big name to sell that many. I think she was better placed as a as a special edition. But, yes, who was the other Undertaker? Was that from the WrestleMania 36? Could be, yeah. It's the, yeah, it's the Boneyard match. Pretty good then. I, I would have thought they may have done like a, an exclusive or or even Ultimate of that figure. Which is surprising it's been released they in enormous will. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they, they released a Boneyard match set or, or something. Um, yeah like that as well uh, maybe we'll take her on like a bike or something and um, we probably couldn't get Gallows and Anderson in there could you but it'll be yeah it'll be a set it actually looks it actually looks really nice that figure taker figures don't usually stick out to me I'm not a mm. massive taker figure fan that one looks pretty good it's quite dark this series is what I will say obviously you've got Karen Cross who um, is quite a colourful tattoos but he wears black trunks normally you've got Alistair Black uh, Liv Morgan Undertaker, who all drapes them in, in black and dark colours. So um, hopefully they make the, bo- the box a bit lighter. Otherwise, good idea. Strange. Um, and then nothing for 86. And then only Candice LeRae for 87 on there. Um, then, yeah, apart from that, I don't think we saw, we saw pictures of the Legends figures. Um Bit of obviously that we've covered before with the Volkov, Dibiasi, Tatanka, and Taker. Um, still no further images of DDP or Brutus Beefcake. Um, the many ones we covered before, we've had some more renders and more pictures of the actual figures that have been shipped for Roddy Piper and Mr. T boxing two pack, 
which mm-hmm. I, w- I wasn't looking at when it first came out, but seeing the pictures, I think I quite like it. Yeah, I'll be definitely getting that. It's going to be out over here with Amazon, I believe, mm. and all your other traders. So, yeah, I'll be getting that one. It's going to be yeah, same, same as Jamie on that one. Um, I wasn't looking forward to it, but it, it looks good. So I'll probably be picking that one up as well. Yeah, and I think two ornaments that we did miss out on, uh, that they haven't actually released the images for as far as I'm aware. I think we've seen some figures but not like the actual full-on finished product is the edge and the macho man um oh yeah yeah I think oh, the man. edge looks standard um the macho man looks really good um i think i'll have to pick that up in replace of my 80s macho i've got there but um yeah i think macho man for you guys was that is there anything else they could have added to that I believe it's coming with like a, a white ish jacket, right? So it's mm. a bit like the hat, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was a nice addition. I like when they do little nods to the Hasbro line. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know much about that one. I'm just hoping that it's different enough from the 17,000 other machos on the market. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of um, early to mid 90s macho man. So happy with that. It's a good idea. I think with the, the Edge one, I think it's going to annoy me a bit if they keep doing it where they release an Elite and then release the Ultimate straight afterwards because I think it's going to devalue the Elite if the Ultimate's there as well. But um, Depends you know, where the release schedule is. Oh, well, yeah, sure. what the figure is. But um, I know the Fiend and, and Hogan are set to be released in America in the next, next four weeks or so. Um, yeah getting it in time for the holidays, but which would mean that Edge and, and Randy Savage should be approximately January. I would have thought for release over there. So, which means that we'll probably get it in November next year over here, normally. Um, and then we've exactly. got the Jeff Hardy and the Triple H two-pack um, with the IC title being the other one. Um, have you guys seen the pictures for these? Yep. Um, good I. <sighs> Is it a good idea? I don't know. I think they sort of warranted their own releases. Like if mm-hmm. I think of a two-pack or a legendary rivalry, I don't think Triple H and Jeff Hardy from 2001 of the IC belt. So not a great yeah. choice, but it's good to get another Triple H in that era. Pretty much took the exact words out of my mouth. Um, it's not something that I'd be thinking about. Um, it's a decent rivalry when I look back on it. Um, but it's 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 a, it's a nothing one for me. But like you say, Triple H is from that era, uh, few and far between. It's my favourite Triple H as well. Um, from that sort of yeah, cerebral assassin era, um, really coming to his own then. And I think Jeff Hardy wise, I think that's one of my favourite Jeff Hardy as well. So I'd say between the two, um, it's a good two pack. But yeah, I agree. I think they're both warranted their own releases for those eras. So. Um, yeah, there's nowhere to really go from there for the for those errors for Jeff anyway. Um that is pretty much everything that they've released over over there. Was there anything that I've missed out, boys? Anything you could think of? Um, I don't think so. Did did AEW release anything? No, yeah, they had really. the two pack. We've got the um Cody Rhodes and the Dusty Road uh, Dustin um <laughs> the natural uh two pack from the, the match that they had last year. Um the box is a bit, a bit much. If I'm honest, have you guys seen the box, the images? Yeah, I mean it's... the box isn't the first thing you notice, is it? It's the massive difference in the height. Oh, which yeah, just kills it <laughs> completely. It's so bad. Mini Cody Rhodes. Mm, um, but yeah, I think the box is just covered in blood, which. Uh, so it won't probably won't be on shelves over here, but I think it might put some. If so, if so, so the entertainer, for example, if they got into sort of the the, the um, AEW line, they're not going to put that on the shelves. If the box arrives covered in blood, personally, but it's hard to tell because you do have like collectibles that are representing horror films and things like that, which will have blood things on. I don't think that's the issue. It's just that you know it is what it is. It's from a match which had a lot of blood. It's a good idea, to be honest, but it is only available on ringside anyway, so you're not going to see it. Don't day. worry. Um, I think a lot of places in the UK had it up for pre-order about four minutes after they announced it in America. So, yeah, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so they had that. Also, the, the, the AEW Series 2, Wave 2, has been released in America now, so they're all starting to ship over. As Adam mentioned earlier, Wave 2, I, see, I saw a picture of Cody next to Moxley, and it's crazy, the height difference. It's, um, yeah. sort of devalues Wave 1 a little bit. Um, what's it's the, really uh, put me off getting the AEW figures if they're going to have scale issues like that. I can't tell whether it's the Cody that's too small or whether it's the Moxley that's too big or the Goldust that's too big. or What do you guys think? Is it a bit, Or is it a bit of both? I'm, I'm kind of guessing it would be Cody from what I've seen um, because the others are kind of in scale with each other. Um, but doesn't mean they're not too big. But the Cody just looks completely out of place. If you actually look at it, the body almost seems like it's squashed. Yeah. Uh, almost the legs seem fine, but the body just just doesn't just look squashed. It's a real shame. It's put me off getting them. I, I still have a pre-order of Series One, but I think that I was given an option to change or cancel it. I might just do that. I think well, Cody is what 185 centimeters according to Wikipedia. Because the first thing I checked, which that's what six two, six one, six two. Um, the six one, I think. Um, and Moxie's what six three, something like that. So yeah, it's like I mean, a huge difference from, from Cody. Huge, I know Dustin's a bit bigger, but six five or something like that. But mm. it's way off, it's way off. Um, and especially when you release them in a two pack together, it just makes it even more obvious. Yeah, it just looks like a father and son pack, doesn't it? Um, the son Pretty hasn't much. quite hit the height yet. I think the only thing I will know is obviously the belt is the same scale as the belt that come with Jericho. Um, and they both look the same on Moxley and Jericho. So scale-wise, Moxley is in scale with the rest of Wave 1, but Cody isn't. I mean, it's all, well, yeah. it's how haven't we noticed this about Cody before this, though? Because no one's really got him out of the box, really, I don't think. Um, I know a lot of people have taken pictures and stuff, but it's mainly for fig photography. Um I've got one upstairs, but I haven't really put them together and had a look. It's only when you physically put them together that you notice it. Mm. Oh, well, shame. Well, I mean, if it, is only, if it is only Cordy, that's the issue. It might not be too bad. But if it's all the characters being completely out of scale, then it's going to ruin it. Well, you've got to think, from wave one, there's not really many guys over six foot um, in wave one. That's true. I think yeah, that, they might get away with it. Yeah, so I think obviously you've got um, Kenny Omega, who I think is bang on six foot. The Bucks are five eleven. Um, who else is in the series? Jericho's five eleven. So yeah, not many that yeah. But without taller than it, and Brandy obviously is uh, I think it's five eight or something. So yeah, that's probably why they've got away with it this far. And then also you put John Moxley in there, who's six four, and you get. Um, yeah, right close to him. Moxie's not that tall compared to Cody, I don't think. I mean, I don't get it. It's too. Mm. It's like they're making two sizes. Like anyone over six one is going to be massive. Anyone under six one is going to be that size. So you're just going oh. to have complete mismatches at every single time you see figures of a different height. Yeah, they, they seem to be aiming their um, collection at collectors rather than children based on the, the boxes and the look and obviously the blood with the new ringside pack. Um, if they're going to do that, they need they need to get all those kind of things right. Otherwise, the collectors are going to tune out. Exactly. Yeah. Which I'm already thinking about doing. So <laughs> um, not taking too long, especially with all the distribution problems over here. Um but I did see a place over in the UK that's getting Wave 2 in next week. Um, I think they're called Medcom Toys. I've probably got my Cody from on eBay. Um, and they're getting Wave 2 in next week, so I'm interested to see. I've never heard of them. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, well, I think looking at so I like the Facebook page as well after I looked on eBay because I'm nosy. And um, there's this, a branch of Toy Master. So basically with Toy Master, you take out essentially a franchise with it you pay them a thousand pound or whatever it is a year, and then you get access to their offers and their stock and so on. So there's a good branch of that. So right. um, they got in wave one at the same time as Smith did roughly. Um, uh-huh. So I got a picture of Cody from them on eBay. Um, 
Yeah, they're quite active on Facebook. They're often going live and showing their stock that they have in store, which is quite good. I think they've been doing something in the lockdown where they've been dropping toys off to people that can't get out or need it for Christmas or birthdays, which is quite good to see. But um, So is that, yeah. is that somewhere local to you? No, no, no. This is they're talking way up north. Oh, um, okay. Closer up to you, I think. Um, actually, I think it might be Birmingham way. Either way, it's, it's not, not down here in Cornwall. Um, we don't get stuff down here. Uh, no Midco way, no Toys. It's called Midco Toys slash Toy Planet. That's what it's called. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You heard of them? Yeah, yeah. That, that pretty much is Toy Master, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, they've revealed AEW um, Series 2 arriving this week. Um, and that was yesterday they posted that. So um, keep yeah. an eye on them if you're interested in those tiny figures. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's the wholesaler that supplies everyone in the UK with, with the AEW toys. So, yeah. I just thought you said something different at first. I, think I, said, yeah, I, I thought you said Medcom at first, which is why I was listening intently. But Midcom yeah. are the distributors. They are the suppliers of it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... Um, they're the ones that... Well, I can't remember their name. I remember it's not with M. <laughs> yeah. Remember. Um, lovely. <laughs> right. Any other news whilst we're on the subject? Um, nothing to do with the reveals we've seen, but we have had some news that we're getting more figures from Cello Toys. So these are the, the Hasbro-esque type figures. And the next release is going to be the Blue Meanie in a two-pack with his podcast host, Josh Chernoff. Ever heard of him? Uh, only when you guys mentioned him um, yeah. last week. Uh, nothing springs to mind. Yeah, I, I, I took a listen to the pod the other day. Um, it, it, there wasn't much wrestling on the like half an hour, 45 minutes that I listened to, um, so it didn't really grasp my attention. I'll probably give it another go. Uh, I'm a really big Blue Meanie fan, so I have ordered the figures. Um, there's only 350 available in Europe, a um, 1,000 in the world, um, probably similar vein to, um, to the last one they released, uh, Nick Aldis. So yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward looking forward to receiving that, but it'll be about the blue meanie, not about the other dude. Yeah, I believe all this was two thousand of a limited thing, but yeah, I, I think it's weird to release such a. I mean, it's not even a well known podcast. I, I can sort of imagine that they would release something like, um, let's just say, Eric Bischoff with Conrad Thompson, because Conrad's like pretty much the biggest wrestling podcaster. In the world is quite well known, but I even sell wouldn't want a figure of them. No, I have to um wait and see on those ones. But um, saying, oh. saying that though, saying that though, I went on um pro wrestling tees and there's loads and loads and loads of t shirts about that podcast. So I'm yeah. guessing in America it might be quite big, which is probably why. doesn't mean they're selling though, does it? No, it doesn't mean that at all. No, I mean, just because it's on the website doesn't mean I mean, we could put up. 15, 20 t-shirts on there. They're not selling, they're not selling, are they? Nah, yeah, but I've heard that they may be releasing a new figure. I don't know if it's confirmed but or rumoured, but um, Kurt Hawkins, Brian Myers has mentioned that Ethan Page might be the next one to get a cello toy. Um, I don't know much about Ethan Page. Any of you guys familiar? Um, only from interviews and stuff that he's done with with other other podcasts i know he's quite friendly with um the major pod people so if they yeah. were to announce that wouldn't surprise me if that's true yeah I've, I've seen a little bit of him on impact um he's got a very heel face uh, he's got a very smug face so i would imagine he'd make quite a big heel he seems to have the, the decent wrestling skills that he needed so it could be one for the future mgf type maybe yeah or Eli Drake, as a TNA. Yeah, he's pretty good. I've seen a, a bit of Eli in NWE. I thought it was quite good. Yeah, um, I thought it was quite talented. I'm surprised they haven't taken him anywhere. But, uh, any other news, chaps? Any other news to bring to the table? Um, all other news. <laughs> we'll be back in a second with some lovely little pick-me-ups. Oh, some lovely pick-me-ups. Welcome to the 
newest installment of the weekly pick-me-ups and we're gonna have a look and see what we've picked up since the last episode and have a look and 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 discuss them really as to why we picked them up uh Jono, let's kick start with you well i think you were shot were listening to us last time after i said they hadn't had a sale for a good six months or something like that on all the new belts so all of a sudden there's 25 percent off all the new replicas so i have picked up let's start with it's the hardcore championship replica belt check that one out that's that's broken i've heard it gets a lot of flack but I, honestly i'm i'm pretty happy with this i know it says wwa on rather than wwf but otherwise I, i'm i think it's a smashing replica um you always say the last release was better but this is kind of the thing that i remember yeah, obviously they had the WWE one in sort of 2002, didn't they? When um, oh Bradshaw, I think, had a custom one for a bit as well. Um, yeah, that was a bit weird. And they also had a women's hardcore championship, if you remember that. Um, I've been watching a lot of 99 wrestling recently and they had a women's hardcore title, but I think I like it. Um, what more could you want? Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, although there's something that does look off about it, but I can't grasp what it is. But either way, I wouldn't an official one I didn't want any sort of um, bootleg one so I'm happy to pick that one up with 25% off that's an awesome pick up, awesome pick up for me I absolutely love that belt um, brings back some of my favourite memories of wrestling I was a big uh, Holly Cousins fan um, so for me that that's amazing if I was if I was going to get a belt and spend a good amount of money on it that would be it it's a good choice no nice chance <laughs> Yeah, it's still on sale. I think this one's actually a little bit a slightly dearer than what it was on the sale. I think it's two ninety at the moment, as of Sunday, the whatever day we are. Um, but I like the um, I like the sort of the tape effect that's got on it. I think the only thing that might be off on it is the the background, the sort of matte finish on the background. Um, but I think they have to do it that way, otherwise it's going to look. Not when all's going to spend 290 quid on it, are they? So, yeah, I'm happy with it. You should be it's a lovely looking belt. Um, do you get anything else from the, the sale? Well, let's not spoil any later things, so shall we? Shall we move on to someone <laughs> else? <laughs> yeah, I'll jump in next then. Um, I've got a little bit of a homage to the million dollar man Ted DiBiase going on at the moment. I'll send Jamie a pic to insert into here. Uh, so I picked up a couple of new bits for that one. First of all, I've got the Hasbro Million Dollar Man and Virgil with the Hasbro Million Dollar title belt. Uh, I believe that was only £15 off eBay. Uh, so that was a bargain in my eyes, that one. Uh, and just to go with it from a Facebook uh, seller called Mark Thomas. Thank you, Mark. I've got an autographed Million Dollar Man Jack's Classic Series. Uh, he was selling them for pretty much the same prices as without being autographed. Uh, so absolutely brilliant pickup. Cheers, Mark, on that one. That's an awesome one for you to get, especially for your like specific Million Dollar Man collection. Getting something signed as well, it's really good. It's good condition like, that as well. Yeah, yeah boxes, boxes, you know, usual shelf were, but other than that, absolutely perfect. Mm. And the SIG's really good as well. Mentions about his Hall of Fame induction, so brilliant. Smashing. Have you um? What, what were we sort of planning on getting next? Have you got anything? Uh, I've got no idea because I've got the the Hall of Fame figure. Um, I've got a couple of couple of Jacks uh, classics two pack with Million Dollar Man and Virgil. Uh, I've got a little Million Dollar title belt. I've not actually got that one in the display yet. A replica mini. Uh, so I don't know. Um, it's just kind of what I see. Um, I'm picking up little bits here and there. I've got one of those mini. Mini heroes types, uh, type ones, uh, one of the Funko mini mystery ones, and one of the old fashioned. I don't know if any of you ever got them in the early 90s. They were like cartoon picks. They were like a, between A4 and A3 cartoon drawings of the wrestlers. They used to have them like in all the touristy spots like Blackpool and things like that. Oh, the um, caricature. Yeah, like a caricature. Yeah. I don't remember them. You'll have to let me know. I'll probably yeah, will jog some memory. I, th yes. I think, um, yeah, I think around that sort of era, I remember the whole 
so I'm going a bit more for a bit of a, a Grandpa Simpson method here. But do you remember they used to have the the two P bubble gums that used to get a wrestling is it a sticker or a tattoo with? It rings a bell, yeah. There used to be a shop at the end of my road who used to sell them, but we're talking 97, 98 for 1992 bubble gum. So I'm not sure what condition they were in. Yeah, it's very, like I remember it must have been 96, 97 because it was in Hayes so where it didn't move to until until then. So must have been around then, but I remember like, the Texas tornado being on one of them and earthquake and typhoon, and the bushwhackers who weren't around then. So um, very suspect. Uh, Right, so my first little pick me up. I went to, well, I didn't have anything because I'm waiting for things are in transit at the moment. Went to H. Smith's yesterday um, and picked up some books, which is always good. They're in the sale. I think they're getting rid of some old backlogs. So I've got an encyclopedia, um, WWE encyclopedia there, which is from 2009. Uh, interesting thing to note, which you guys aren't going to. Well, it's the first thing I looked for, but Chris Benoit in there, which is mm. very peculiar for 2009. Yeah, I actually have that one. Yeah. That yeah, it, it, was the, it was the first time that they'd uh, mentioned Benoit um, in this book um, for quite a few years. Uh, and he's been in every edition since. I've got every edition of those. And he's been in every edition since. It was the very first time um, I remember reading it as a bit of noteworthy news mm. that uh, they never, never mentioned him. And then he was there in that book and everyone was quite shocked. Yeah. It's like, it is quite surprising since they never acknowledge him and swear away from anything like a new documentaries or anything like that. It's, it's never talked about. It's strange. Well, yeah. I mean, even the, like the Randy Orton, when they speak about his career, obviously his first major title win was against Benoit and they cut yeah. out they just show a bit of the RKO when you can't see Benoit in it but um, yeah strange um, also picked up this which is WWE 50 with a full word by Vincent Kennedy McMahon which was nice of him um, just sort of goes into sort of all the, the top attractions and everything which is quite fun to have and I also picked up an Attitude Era book where they Stone Cold bottle opener. Um, they're all on sale for, for like, I think, four quid each, I think, roughly. I've come to, um, I think it was like 18 pound in total, because I also picked up for the first time. I've been around for a while, but I've got the Top Slam Reloaded cards. Um, wasn't going to pick them up, and then I figured, oh, I'm here, I might as well. Uh, I've got an Adam Hanslip section there with only Lorcan and Danny Birch on there. Nice. Just for you. But um yeah, I got they're alright. I think some of the shinies look quite nice. Yeah, that's my pick me ups for this week. Um, yeah, just, just, just going sorry. Just go going ahead. back to that fifty years book that you've got. It's uh <laughs> it's a genuine it's a genuinely good read is that book. Uh, I remember taking it on holiday when I took took the little boy to a caravan so I had loads of time because he obviously had to go to bed early and I had to stay in the caravan so I remember taking it to the um and read it from start to finish during that week uh really good read you'll enjoy it yeah I think um I haven't really tucked into it yet because I've been going through the encyclopedia just and I look at some stuff but um yeah I think it's Kevin Sullivan that writes this one as well yeah, so I think it's uh, he wrote the encyclopedia one, which I'm quite enjoying. So, interesting person to write, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, so I, I imagine he probably insisted on having Ben Warren there because wasn't well. I think they were married to the same person to start with, but then they become friends after a while, didn't they? Um, I don't think they were ever friends. No. <laughs> interesting to have him in there anyway, then. Yes. Okay. So it's my turn again. I, I'm going to need to stand up and go and get it because I've got to bring it over. I'm always going to reverse the dump truck in with all the goodies. So we'll have a, a zoom in. It's the oh. Legends Series 8 Jig Roberts in the purple attire. I originally seen this on eBay for a fair price, um, cheaper than what we've been seeing them go for. I originally thought it was a chase, so I snapped it up straight away. 
<laughs> but I, I later found out it's it's the normal release. But I'm still happy to um, to pick that one up. It's a um, cracking figure, really good. The hands look good. Yeah, I thought I'll give them a little point in hand to mix things up a bit. Yeah, you can do the whole do the whole DDT thing with it, can't you? Yeah, it's not a bad idea, but as I say, I've got that many hands kicking about. Don't know what I'd do with them. That's good. That I the, think the... from sorry, oh, no. I was gonna say about the bag. Um it's good that the bag actually fits in the hand. Yeah. I think it's going to be one of those like uh, like the Christian one where the chase and the normal one get kind of mixed numbers. Um, I don't think it's one where the chase is really, really hard to get this one. So I think I think you made a good purchase on it, even if it isn't the chase. Yeah, well, it's surprising you say that because it has been quite difficult to get all the chase. I haven't seen the chase released over here at all. I don't know if um, Wrestle HQ had it in their special department. Jamie did they? No, there's nothing, nothing in there. Um, I haven't really seen, I haven't really seen it released over here. I don't think. No, I think you, you you might not be correct on that one, Adam. But we'll. I'll, have, I'll have to try and pick it up then. Definitely. <laughs> um, right to me. Uh, we'll make this one nice and quick because I think uh, somebody else has shown this these ones before. Um, but I managed to get the collector's edition from Big Big Pop Shop. The Rocky Johnson and the superstar Billy Graham recently. Um, I think I got them at prime time, so I got them for thirty-two pounds each. I think they've gone slightly up in uh, in price now. Uh, really, really happy to get them. I've got to make the heartbreaking decision of whether to open them to get them in there or not now, or whether to keep them on display in the boxes. Uh, I'm not decided yet. What do you guys reckon I should do? Let them breathe, obviously. Get them open, get them in the shelves. That's what they're for. Enough for staying in the box, for the most part. I think I, I think at the moment, I don't think figures or collect positions figures anyway lose much value when you think about the box. I know what you mean. Obviously, you want to keep them in there. But, um, yeah, recently I've been seeing loose figures go for similar or just a bit less than, than box, if they're complete, yeah. obviously. It's true because people just want the figure, really. Sometimes a lot of collectors aren't even wanting a box. I mean, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but most of the time, if it's going to be cheaper, I'll pick it up loose, like mm. I did with the Jake Robert. Yeah, definitely. Right, I'll get my next one because again, I forgot to pick it up. You've only had warning about this segment. Yeah, shame I didn't. But <laughs> To go back to the Euro shop, I picked up a mini belt quite a while since I bought one, and it's the, the Fiend Universal Championship mini belt. Boom. So, um, it's pretty well made. It's quite thick on the... Um, yeah, on the it's, it's, yeah, it looks quite thick on the... Lay it flat? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thick old one, isn't it? Um, I'm surprised they haven't sold out quicker, if I'm honest, the Fiend ones, because a lot of people... Like the thing, didn't they? So, unless they bought in a lot more than they do anything else, but the um, the actual universal replica one has sold out on Euroshop, it's not available anymore. I was debating whether to pick it up from the WWE shop in America, which would end up being about a 330 with delivery and customs and that sort of thing. So, I was on the fence. I did actually email Euroshop asking if they're getting any more in. They said that they're going to be updating the replica of this. So I might just hold up and see how they're going to change it or how they're going to update it. Because it looks like it's going to get a, a re-release at some point. And I don't know why. But a little bit of information for bell collectors there. I think for me, that one's going to be kind of like the up, up, down, down championship where it didn't appeal to me at all, but I managed to pick mm -hmm. that up cheap. And when I got it, I was actually really shocked on how nice it looked. I think looking at that one in your hands, it looks a lot better than just seeing it on the screen. Yeah. At least this one's actually been on WWE TV, not just for gaming yeah. guys on Twitch or whatever it is. Yes, that's the next one. Let's move on to your next item. 
Um, yeah, again, back to uh, Mark Thomas on Facebook. Picked up another three of the uh, signed ones. Uh, these ones are the three faces of Foley. So we've got the Dude Love Jack's Classic Series. Um, I believe that was a limited edition one. I might be wrong, but I think it was. Um, the LJN Mankind and the Cactus Jack Jack's Classic Series. Uh, I'm not a huge Jack's picker-upper. Um, but they were, again, three of those for 75 quid, I think, altogether. And the fact that they're all, all three assigned, bargain us. That is an amazing deal. It's, it's a, they, when you're getting them signed for that little, you've really done a, a, a good little investment, if anything. Well, it was a deal that Adam almost missed out on, wasn't it, Adam? Do you remember? It was, uh, you had to point out to me that they were uh, three for £75 because I didn't realise. Mm. <laughs> I think you just had half your face removed, so I think you are forgiven on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit blurry. Um, I've got a small... Well, Adam sent me a, the DX white top, white T-shirt. Uh, oh. It was nice of him. So that arrived the other day. Um, it's currently residing at the top there. I haven't popped him on Billy Gunn yet, but yeah, thanks for that, Adam. No problem, Mark. that all you... All from you, Jamie? That's, that's yeah, cheap week. Well, we've talked about it for weeks on this podcast. And I finally went and done it. It is the Nitro Arena. Minty as well. This is, it's not mint, it's used, the box is, um, but it did come in its original box, which is pretty nice. Was described as incomplete, so I picked up really cheap. It was like fifteen pounds plus postage. Oh. Um, when I put it together, the only thing I can see missing is the camera, which is neither here nor there because it doesn't affect the structure at all. So I'm really happy to pick that up at that price. I'm going to do a rope replacement though because the ropes are really terrible. I'd rather make my own and try and make it look a bit nicer. So I'll get a picture. We maybe insert here and we'll have a, a a bit more look at it later hopefully um uh, my my last one oh sorry we'll speak about uh, nitro arena um so jamie you're you're a big wcw fan on that one is that one that you'll be picking up or well i've i've recently started watching wcw again because I, I said before i didn't really pick it up wasn't allowed to watch it um as a child because uh, I went to Friday nights at my mum's house and me and my brother used to fight and I broke his finger once we were watching it so we're banished from watching it ever again um, so I never really watched it as a child so I think I've recently started getting a bit more into it um, and yeah I thought with that I've been picking up the Toy Biz ones and yeah I think the Nitro Arena is probably the next step or the Bash at the Beach one but that's not cheap is it so I'd say, um, yeah, it's a lovely arena. The soft bit in the middle. Uh, I didn't like it as a child, but I think I prefer it more now as a, as an adult. So yeah, good pick up, huh? Yeah. How, how are you um, going to display it? Sorry. How are you displaying it, Jono? I've not decided yet. I'll try and maybe stick it on a, a small coffee table or something in in this room somewhere. But I've got a load of rings just scattered about that. I really don't know what to do with. It's going to be something to to have a think about and try and get them on display somehow. Um, it, all, the, all the sounds and everything works. It's crack and pick up. It's really, really good. I just have to decide which figures I want to display around it because it's going to have to be selective with it being limited for size. Very yeah. satin for sure. Especially with the um, the sunken bit in the middle, you can't really... No, I couldn't really stand anyone on that bit, could you? Is that one? Is it comes with the... Does it come with a hook where you can pop Sting on? Yeah, I don't know how like sort of how sturdy that is to actually hang a figure from it for a long time for a display, but I'll try and figure something out with that. Even if it's just having Sting on top mm. somehow. And the rafters. I'll definitely get Sting. I think I'll probably add the Wolfpack Sting rather than the black and white. Controversial. Mm. Yeah, I think the the black and white is much more iconic for that pose. I just feel I want to have the representation of NWO black and white and the representation of the Wolfpack. So I'll have the Nash in the Wolfpack and you know Luger and that sort of thing and Sting as well. So 
it's kind of a mid ninety eight sort of era I'll go for. Uh, my last pickup is uh, Adam's eBay bargain of the week, um, which is the WrestleMania series Brock Lesnar figure. Um, I've seen this one go for upwards of 50, 60 at the moment, and I managed to get that one for 20. Um, and box is pretty much perfect, apart from your usual shelf work. Lovely stuff. I remember when it was first out, or maybe not when it was first out, maybe six months to a year down the line, the start of releasing for £10. I bought so many of them to to um, to open and sold the figure, belt, etc., all separate. Good little... Um, <laughs> I think one of the reasons it's gone up in value is just the box. It, the colours on the box are really popping colours. So I think it's yeah. one that really a- ages well, this one. Yeah, no, yeah it's good. good. They had that Never series. Yeah, they had the, that series and the WrestleMania Heritage series in the local Wilkinson's to me. Um, and they reduced them all to, I think I think it was a tenner, and the Heritage ones were a fiver each. Remember rightly, yeah. so I think I only picked up Taker and Kane from there. But um, looking back, I wish I would have picked up some of those bad boys. Yeah, all those were reduced to a tenner at some point, so mm. it was a good little pick up. I wish I kept a few back rather than you know, them all straight away, but did make some nice bit of money on them. Yeah. yeah anybody got anything else? Yeah, last one. So, started with a replica. Why don't we finish with one? You think you know me? It's the rated R spinner belt. Certainly one that's been on the radar for quite a while. Um, it's the first time. I think it was re- reduced at first, but it's the first time in a while it has been reduced, so I picked that up straight away. £270. Plus, well, postage doesn't matter, really. That's what the last one is. Maybe the so one I... for reduced. Can you wear that throughout the underrated R superstar segment coming up? Can you? If you insist that and do that, it's not a problem. I insist you just keep it spinning as well throughout. Be lovely. Am I supposed to hold it on my shoulder or around the waist? Well, however you fancy. That's that's, that's your your choice. That one. Um... It's so hard. I can get around the waist though. Yeah. I think the... <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried to like put these replicas, the, the studs just don't fit together too easy at all. Mm. You have to have someone else put it on you. Uh, it comes in handy then, doesn't it? Um, well, hopefully you don't do the same sort of celebration that Edge did when he won it. Um, keep that to yourself, please. Uh, mm. Anything else pick me up wise, boys? That's it. That's the main right. event. Lovely still that is the main event and a half. Better than my books anyway. Um, all right, so next up we've got Break It Down, which also we'll be discussing in the Survivor Series, and we'll be back in a Back, and we now have Break It Down, which is our uh, segment we'd like to discuss uh, any topics that have been either grinding our gears or uh, we've been enjoying recently. So. This is more of a grind our gears one. This is based on Survivor Series, Final Farewell, or Best of the Best. And really we're just sort of discussing where we find Survivor Series at the moment and, and sort of where we see the future for it. So, Jono, start with you. Survivor Series, are you a, a fan or? Start with me. Yes, start from the beginning. Yes, I was a huge fan. This was the, the peer view that probably meant the most to me. My film when I was a kid was... I want, if I'm going to buy like a VHS, I want to see as many wrestlers as possible in one video. Uh, so the Survivor Series and Royal Rumble are always the, the best ones to pick off for that. And so, yeah, I loved it. I always thought it was good to see the, the guys working together, showing friendship between people you might not have seen before. So I think of like Survivor Series 89 is probably the one I'm most familiar with because I had that on video watch it to death. You'll see the, the big boss man working with Honky Tonk Man or working with Rick Martel. You wouldn't really see that before. Or like Tito working with Brutus and that sort of thing. So I always love that sort of concept. And usually before it would have some sort of build up prior to this. So it was always rivals going against rivals on each side. And it was 
I don't know where things went wrong, but that was what I loved about Survivor Series. Move, move on to what is not good anymore later. <laughs> yeah, my earliest memories, it basically, it went in an order. It went Royal Rumble, Battle Royals, Survivor Series matches. For me yeah. as a kid, watching them and recreating them with figures in front of me especially, I wanted as many people in that ring as possible. Um, and I just wanted as many characters to see, like you say, as many people on one show as possible. Survivor Series really delivered with that. I was a huge fan of the tag team Survivor Series matches. So mm-hmm. you look at the 88 and the 89 one, they both had 20-man tag team matches. They were my favourites by far out of all of them. Uh, I've even got my Survivor Series uh, mug today with my 1989 tag teams on, just, uh, just to make sure I had a link in there. Um, That'll be it, it. Just want to correct you before you go any further. Be it, it with the the second one. The first one was eighty seven. There was no tag team one in eighty nine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it started in eighty eight, but it started in eighty seven, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're right. The rumble though. Yeah. But yeah, um, but I when, love- I, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, Survivor Series delivered in every way, shape, or form. When I was a little kid, playing with figures, it's exactly what I needed. Yeah, definitely. I think um, going to Blockbuster and seeing on the front cover five against five or all the team names on there, I think it's it's just different gravy, isn't it? I think now when I watch them back and I watch the early 90s or the late 80s Survivor Series, when it has Vince McMahon being like, oh, it's the ultimate team versus, you know, whoever was facing that, it's sort of a different atmosphere at the start. And I I agree, also, if you have different storylines going into the match of one tag team is feuding with another tag team, one champion against another champion, or all those sort of things. It's it's a different story, isn't it? Um, compared to nowadays where it's just, well, we'll discuss that in a sec. Um, so yeah, we discussed, yeah, so sort of that's the, the early days of the Survivor Series. We then had a bit of a revamp, a bit of a, a turnaround for it. When... I will mention it. Uh... This sort of trend continued to 91, and then we had a brief sort of let up with 92, where it was a lot of singles matches or tag matches only. And that was a bit disappointing, but at least they did get back on track in the next few years with proper Survivor Series matches again. And that continued until I think it was possibly 2000, 2001, and it went a bit, a bit more into a traditional pay per view style. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They- they experimented in 91, didn't they? They put a couple of couple of different matches in from the Survivor Series. They still had all the Survivor Series matches, really? but then they had uh, Undertaker, Hogan, and there was one oh. more match that I can't remember. Um, and then in 92, I think, I might be wrong, but I think there was only one elimination match, and it was a tag team one where only one member of the tag team had to be eliminated. So it wasn't even a very long one either. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're right. It was um, Nasty Boys and... Natural disaster against the Beverly's and Money Inc. Money Inc. Yeah, yeah. Good match. That, yeah, but I was I couldn't even call that a proper Survivor Series match in that case. Well, yeah. Here or there. It was 1994, I think, that they started to bring back the Survivor Series matches. Oh, they did have them in '93, of course. Um, that was uh, all the way through that because they had the you know there was like Lex Luger's team versus Yokozuna. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the Thanksgiving turkey video thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there was quite a few on that. I don't think there was any singles matches there, which is good. Night four, I had this one video. That was pretty good. They went back to five mans for the for that one. Well, apart from the um, the, the clowns versus the kings. Do you remember that one? Jerry oh, the King. Oh, wheezy, squeezy and easy or something. Talk about quality entertainment. That is that is really what you want to see in the middle of a pit of you. It really was great for the time. Perfect. Dink was it Dink Pink? Wink and Stink. Wink, that's it, yeah. Was Stink. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, and um, um, cheese, lazy and queasy. Uh, that's and then obviously you come through to like the middle to late nineties, and also you've got the Deadly Games tournament, which Obviously, yeah, yeah. Survivor Series was something different. It was a tournament, um, which also was the crowning of the rock. 
I can kind of understand why they did that at the time. It, it did make sense. A tournament is a bit of a survival aspect to it. So and forgive them for that, let's just say. Yeah, t- tournament came number four after Survivor Series with the figures. Mm. Love, love a good tournament. Um, and then you go through to like the, the 2000s and... Um, I think 2001 we might talk about because that was the time of the Alliance versus the yeah, which... UF. I think it's a really big state. I think if the Alliance meant more and it wasn't just um, WWE Thunder wrestlers as well as Austin and Angle and so on. Uh, well, it was a different, it's a story for a different time, the Alliance side of things. But I, I enjoyed Survivor Series 90, uh, 2001. I think it had a battle royal in there. Um, it had people that were actually surviving, should we say, because if you win the title, you keep your job regardless of who wins at the end. That was the the gist of the show. So it had Test versus Edge, I think was one of the matches where they unified the US and the Intercontinent, I believe, might have been European. No, that um, was a pre for things to come, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, I think that was that was the, the gist of the show was the surviving side of things, which you're essentially keeping your job. Um, so I think that was a good way to, to look at it back then. Yeah, for the next few years, you you guys might have to fill in some blanks for me because not well, really. Luckily for you, two thousand and two is my favourite Survivor series, um, right? Because they once again revamped what the word Survivor meant, and they had the Chamber as the main event. Um, I've got the match card here. Um, you got the Duddy Boys, Bubble Ray and Spike, and Jeff Hardy. They defeated Three Minute Warning uh, and Rico in a. Elimination tables match, so you're surviving that match. Um, a little, yeah. Was, they then got singles one, so you've got Billy Kidman, Jamie Noble, which was a decent match. Victoria versus Trish in a hardcore match. Um, Big Show Lesnar, which was Lesnar's first defeat. Um, then you come into Los Guerreros, uh, they beat Edge and Rey Mysterio and Belmar and Angle in a triple threat elimination match, and then the main event. Yeah of the Elimination Chamber, which stacked of talent. So I, I quite like it because I think every match had a good storyline going into it and bought the big four or big five, as it was at the time, and then went back to it. So that's why I like that one. It's a good pay-per-view. It's a good matches. It just it, it, it shows that it's more of a traditional pay-per-view style rather than the concept of the tag teams versus tag teams. I did keep one of them in there, which fair enough, but it's not what it used to be it's getting I would say it's at its mediocre point now it's going to get worse um, Adam mid 2000s have you got anything I've, I've not got much to be honest that, that was the era that I started to drift a little bit um, and it's not one that I've uh, got into revisiting yet because I'm still in the 80s on my rewatches um, so I've not much to add on the mid 2000s to be honest with you Um. Well, 2003, I think, went back to the... I think it had two matches in there. So it had a Survivor Series match from SmackDown, a Survivor Series match from Raw. Um, yeah, I remember. Yeah, and that's when Cena had his face turned. I think it was Team Angle versus Team Lesnar. And Lesnar had the big beefy chaps in there. I think it was Nathan Jones, Matt Morgan, A-Train, Big Show, Lesnar. Yeah. Um, I actually do remember that one or maybe I've watched it at another point. It's quite well, good, actually, because I think Hardcore Holly was feuding with Brock Lesnar, which was quite a unique little rivalry. I thought that was, it was a nice thing. And obviously, it was the start of the Cena face push. Yeah, so it was, it was Angle, it was Angle, ben, Benoit, Hardcore Holly, Cena, um, and one more person who eludes me. Mm, yeah, I'm not um, sure. I can't remember who it was. I think it was, that's fine, isn't it? But um, yeah, I remember they, they picked up the victory on there. And um, yeah, Cena picked up Big Show. Everyone was like, what? Let's use this guy. And then that was Cena's big moment. And I think they had Shane versus Kane on there as well, which was um, yeah. a decent match. And then also you then go through to the mid 2000s where it was just sort of the standard Raw and SmackDown had a match each. Sort of got I a bit someone, of a So I recall, I think it was 2006. Yeah. Um, DX with the Hardy Boys and CM Punk in a team. Yeah. I think they did a clean sweep against whoever the opponents were. It was like 
Mike Knox was on there. I remember. That's when... I always thought that was a, a pr- pretty cool team, at least. Yeah, sort of, yeah. It's a I'm not sure. Team. Did they have any more tag team matches in that one? Or was it just that was the only one? Because that's the only um, thing I remember. There was another one on there. I can't remember who was in there. I think I want to say MVP, but I'm not certain on that one. So what we've seen is that like maybe one or two um, tag team matches that were storyline based. Yeah. Yeah, that's normally the way it goes. And then um, anything else to add before it all went wrong? Uh, no, I don't think we, we, we going back a little bit here. I don't think we touched on the uh, Soul Survivor match at the end of the 1991. Oh, we haven't. Yeah. We kind of yes. a, a big bit there. Quick rewind. Rewind. Um, that concept obviously only lasted one Survivor Series. Um, for me, every single match I had in the ring with my figures then used that concept. And I carried on that for a good few years after that concept had died. Um, why did that concept die? And should it be brought back? I looked at a time. I just, I think I've mentioned this on a previous podcast today. Like, you're going to have to recognise who's the good guys and who's the bad guys by, like, you know, you're saying that the Warrior and Hogan and and Tito, I guess, for that case, were on one side and Million Dollar Man and everyone on that other side. Why would you decide to... How does that work? It would be easy enough to, to get out of that by doing, like, a random draw or something like that. There's There's easy ways around it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of uh, possibilities, and I definitely think it was a good concept. Should have tried it again. Unless at the start you just say, like, you, everyone on the left is on the left side and the right is on the right side, and then... Yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'd figure something out. But, yeah, I I enjoyed the concept. So, I I haven't watched... Was it 90, wasn't it? 1990? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently you were watching this about six weeks ago. Uh, still watching it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's. I, I wasn't aware of the concept until I rewatched it. I think I had it on. Well, you know, borrowed it on video when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I had the concept so a few weeks back, and um, I liked it. I thought, oh, I wonder if it goes into '91, and then yeah, nothing. So very strange. Um, but it's a good idea. I liked it. It's a good. It's always a good way Survivor Series as well to create a new rivalry because there's so many people in the rings on each side to create a rivalry between team partners going forward into the Rumble um, or just the opposite sides. If somebody pins somebody, then that gives them a couple of weeks where they have matches between them. So I always think there's a really good payoff with Survivor Series matches. Mm. Yes. Definitely. Um, and then we go into where it went wrong. So... Uh, for me, it was 2012 onwards, I want to say. Um, Around that uh, area. Yeah, where the sort of slow slow decline has hit. Um, one that notably stands out for me uh, was, I think it was 2015, uh, where a lot of emphasis was put on Taker 25 years, um, that the rest of the card, there's a tournament on, they had on there, a crown range of the champion. Uh, Sheamus lost in a five-on-five match and then went and cashed in at the end of the night, which is fine because that always, always has money in the bank. But yeah, it just sort of felt a bit stale. You've got matches thrown together at the last minute, champions being beaten by Lucha Brothers, or not Lucha Brothers, Lucha, what are they called? Um, Kalisto and Sin Cara? Dragons. Lucha Dragons, that was it. Um, yeah, so I think that's where it went a bit. For me, I'll tell you actually, if you're going to go back to a certain point where it might start to go wrong, it's when WWE introduced the concept of having a pay per view that was surrounding one match in particular, say uh, Hell in a Cell pay per view or TLC pay per view or Elimination Chamber pay per view, because then it's basically trying to um, make a match that fits, you know, you've got a match stipulation before you've even got a storyline. So they're essentially just throwing things out there. There's no reason to have a Hell in a Cell. There's no reason to have Elimination Chamber. There's no reason. And that, I mean, I suppose it started with a pay-per-view called Bragging Rights, which is actually fine in concept because, you know, you're going to have your Raw v Smackdown in that sense. 
But it's when they started using the Survivor Series of this that really, really hurt me personally. <laughs> because the, the the booking just became incredibly lazy. It was just Raw v SmackDown. There was no story. And more likely that we've seen recently is that they've been drafted to SmackDown and Raw three weeks before the pay-per-view. Yeah. Why would they give a, a crap about which brand they're on or why would they care about winning if they've only been there for two, three weeks? Yeah, that, that was going to be my next point is the timing at the moment, especially, is horrendous. If they've only just gone to a brand, why do I care as a, a watcher thinking, oh, Keith Lee's uh, going to win it for Raw. Um, they can't even be bothered to change him on the WWE.com roster to Raw and he doesn't wear a Raw t-shirt until the week before Survivor Series, and there's nothing about him that is Raw, because everyone thinks NXT when they think Keith Lee. Why am I going to care? Why am I going to get invested into that match? Because yeah. the wrestlers aren't. So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I completely agree with both those points. It makes zero sense to have a draft or whatever it is a few weeks before. Um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to the elimination matches, last year was a, a, a good spin on it when they had NXT involved I thought NXT had something to fight for um, goes back to the the early 2000s then um, so it goes back to like the early 2002s basically when you had Smackdown being one brand where you go to for your wrestling and for your technical and your um, and watching decent wrestling and then you've got Raw where you go for your storyline so it's two completely different shows both trying to see what the A brand is whereas now we know that Raw is the flagship show. I think it was good to have NXT in the mix for that one, which they've now cut for this year. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they had to cut it, really. Um, I don't think they had really much of an option with the COVID crisis. Um, they can't really keep up with NXT. Uh, just joining in on that, they've got enough to enough to think about, to be honest. Um, so I think it was right to cut it. It was, it was momentum lost because obviously NXT did brilliantly last year in Survivor Series, and it was quite an exciting one. Uh, it wasn't the Survivor Series of old, don't get me wrong, but it was still quite an exciting concept, and it made me smile as an NXT fan. But, you know, things happen. Yeah, I mean, if we want to talk about drafts, I think the whole draft situation in general is just really bad anyway, because guys aren't even on there a year, and they're getting drafted to and from SmackDown to Raw, like yo-yos, it's it's just so hard to keep up with. It just doesn't build a brand at all. It doesn't make anything different to each other. Um, well, Apollo so, Cruz comes to mind for that. <sighs> well, yeah, you, you, you could name anyone on that roster apart from maybe Titus O'Neil, Nia Jax, and Seth Rollins, who's only just went to SmackDown. They've pretty much everyone else has been flip flopping since. 2006, 16, I think there's a tremendous mm. split again. Which actually does remind me because I thought 2014 was a pretty good Survivor Series where you had the Authority versus oh. the guys who were in some t- team scene. Yeah. That was decent. I thought that was, a, that was a cracking match uh, with Sting and mm. Dol- Dolph Ziggler. They got him over big time and then completely wasted it. Shock. Um, yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, well, the last few years as a prime example. Look at the Triple H when he joined Team Raw. Yeah, didn't make sense. Why was on Raw? We pedigreed Kurt Angle, and you're like, oh, here we go. Here's the start of a... And then they just sort of turned that storyline into the Ronda Rousey element, which... Yeah, I suppose it laid the stage for Angle to be Ronda's partner, but... Yeah, it was just... I think they could have gone somewhere with the Braun Strowman side of things with that, and... Um, the last time it's felt big, personally, um, was 2016 when they just had the the draft or the brand extension, um, and you had like obviously the Raw guys and the SmackDown guys, and Ellsworth was in there, and you actually had the champions versus champions and so on. And I think that then felt like it was onto something, and then yeah, it just sort of. 2016 was probably one of the top five pay per views of the last decade for me. Um, I think the Survivor Series in 2016 was amazing. The last match, I think it went almost an hour. It's the one where Orton and Wyatt won. That was an absolutely cracking match. And it kind of made up for the people who didn't like the Goldberg-Lesnar match that followed it. Um, I personally didn't mind it. But it made up for those people, obviously, with it only lasting a minute or so. 
but even the rest of the matches, they had five on five women and they had a 10 on 10 in a tag team match. So it felt like it kind of revered back to old in a way. Yes, they did have three singles matches as well, but the matches were such good quality that it almost made up for the lack of feel about it. Completely agree about the match quality. Very good matches. Can't complain about that. Completely disagree about the sentiment that any of that was a good idea to do. It's just the same old Raw v Smackdown, no storyline. Awful. Don't like it. Never will. And the, well, what, that's, what, what, that's, what was the storyline in the original Survivor Series then? Like if you had the 10 on 10 tags in 87, 88, what was the storyline? Like the, the, the storyline would be that the guys on each team were fume with the guys on the other team at the time. So, you, you, you know, you'd have... Um, Goodies and baddies. Yeah, in the sense that one of the team from one team is fuming with the, the other guy and the other team, essentially, for the most part. Obviously, it wasn't always like that. Um, yeah, I, I do get that in a way. I can, I can see that. Um, but it, it's, it's unfortunately, they're not going in that direction. So we've got to rely on quality of matches at the moment, which is a bad thing. And Jamie did say that like, this is when things changed for the better, when he said that we were getting champions for champions. That is the single worst thing that's even worse than having Raw v SmackDown is having champions versus champions because that I is in the match. Lazy, lazy book. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, all right, fair enough. But that is the most lazy book and you can get completely. Have the, the world champion versus the universal champion. Well, for why? What's the point? Have yeah, Intercontinental versus the US. Again, what's the point? Women's v. Women's. It's just nothing there. It's just thrown together for no reason. Yeah, it's, it's not going to lead anywhere either at all, unless they're doing another brand split in three weeks. But other than that, it's not going to lead anywhere. So I completely agree with that one. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah, what I meant where it was like, obviously, I think at the time, I can't remember who the champion was, but they had like, I think, obviously they had Wyatt, Orton, who that storyline advanced. You had the Shield reunion, even though they're on different brands. You had the Styles versus um, Ambrose, which advanced as well in the match. And with Ellsworth, I think, caused that. Oh, yeah. so that's what I think Styles was the champion then, wasn't he? Or Ambrose, one of the two. But, well, um, I mean, you actually did bring something else to my attention there, is that you've got a mixed match of um, heels and baby faces in one team. So mm. you, who are you cheering for? It's, it's just doesn't make sense. It's very, very poor. But, um, I like it. Yeah, I think I agree with the fact that the lazy booking champion versus champion, it makes zero sense. It hasn't worked since 2001 where they were unif- unifying the championships. And I think that's... Yeah, it made sense there. But ruined my Survivor yeah. Series tradition. And then it brings us to where we are today um, of just no build-up for the matches. The only real build-up I've seen has been Street Profits and New Day, where they had a bit of a conversation the other week um, on SmackDown. Street Profits have been sort of interrogating Big E on there. I think that's probably been the only real build-up. We had a bit this week with McIntyre, who's not even a champion, and Reigns. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that didn't make sense, because McIntyre's not against Reigns, so it, it didn't even... It? There was no reason for it. A, yeah, I only caught, caught the results. I have no idea why Joe McIntyre is on SmackDown. They just do what they want. It doesn't matter. Who cares what brand you're on? Oh, just come to SmackDown. Have a well, match I, against Joe too. I can tell you for why. Because obviously on Raw, it's McIntyre versus Orton for the title. So, no just behold. in case. Yeah, just in case. Or there's going to be a screwy finish. with They're both going to be some form of champion. It'll be a triple threat match just to protect McIntyre and Reigns. It's probably going to be... So when's this Orton McIntyre match happening? On Raw. So it'll be after the release of this. Uh, before, so. Um... Uh, sorry, before I'm getting confused. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it'll be before the release of this. So um, I'm sure by the time this gets released, we'll find out who the champion is, and it'll make a complete sense after that, I imagine. Well, isn't that just a spoiler then? No. <laughs> Potentially. No, I mean, like, you know, having Drew McIntyre start a few with Reigns. Yeah. It, it, it's yes a spoiler no. or, or a diversion. Or a red herring. 
Yeah. Or a red room. Um, let's all just agree now that Survivor Series hasn't been good since the gobbledygooker. Uh, I suppose it shows how much interest I've got in the current product that I don't really know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> it's good if you don't run a fantasy league, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think the death of it has just been since since the brand extension, brand split, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it was on the way out anyway, and I think this has really just taken the shotgun out the back to it. Um, personally, we, we used to have a big five with the King of the Ring involved. That got stale. That got removed. Um, this could be going the same way. Unfortunately, they don't do something. They almost I ended it earlier, didn't they? They brought it in like they they announced it really, really soon before the event actually started because there was loads of rumours saying that it would be gone. Mm. Yeah, that before. I, I wouldn't mind if they actually did some sort of dragon rights, bring that back. And just have Survivor Series be a bit more storyline based, yeah. with the the their the elimination matches. So you have five guys in SmackDown versus five guys from SmackDown, not five from Raw versus five <laughs> from SmackDown. So yeah, that's the sort of direction I'd like to see it go, but don't think it's going to happen. Um, one thing for sure, I hope they don't bring back that under siege thing. Do you remember that with Shane McMahon? Remind me. Well, he oh, had- yeah, actually. Do. Yeah. yeah, the invasion. Yeah, and uh, Kurt Angle and the... They're here, they're here, that thing, which yeah. was yeah. just not very good, was it? Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's sort of me on there. That's where I'm at at the moment with it. I just sort of wish they either completely revamp it or they just scrap it all together. Adam? Your thoughts on going forward? How yeah, do you- that, that, I, I don't think they can really revamp it because if you look at like a women's match, you don't really have 10 women on one brand, so you can't make that kind of match. Um, even tag teams, you couldn't do that. I suppose you could put like two singles people in a tag team together against two singles people in a tag team. But just since the brand split, it, it doesn't have that appeal to me anymore. There's, there's not m- many places they can go with it. Just drop it. I think you've just called it there. You could you could have the Street Profits team with um, even the Uso, something like that. Oh, actually, they're with the Reigns now, aren't they? R- wrong example, but you could have, you know, Big E and the Profits and who else is on SmackDown? Let's go Chad Gable. Chad Gable. Chad Gable. Versus, you know, pick another four heel team. Yeah, It can work. You don't have to have a 20-man tag anymore. That's not going to happen with today's tag teams. With your women, four and four, you could probably manage that just about from each brand. Not be much storyline because there's not much storyline going on anyway, but it's, it's be worth it, doing it. If it's relevant and it fits the storyline, do it. If it doesn't... Do, yeah, exactly. You don't do have it. to have a women's match. Yeah. If, if you've got Sami Zayn, who's feuding with Big E, and the Street Profits, who are feuding with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, and then... Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gable, who's feuding with King Corbin. Um, just whack them all in together and have a big, lovely Survivor Series pie. It's... That would be fantastic. Yeah, but instead of that, we've got, oh, you guys just qualify for the for the team by beating these nobodies and, and Natalia in a, in a triple threat match. Get in the team. Who cares? Yeah. Um, I think that's the thing at the moment, is that no one really cares. No, I think that's a good place to leave it. Yeah, who cares? We don't care. Right, we will be back shortly with our segment, which will be based on um, the underrated R superstar. So we've got that, and we've also got our lovely draw, which we're going to do with a free giveaway. So we'll see you guys in two. Hi everyone, it's Jamie from the Three Points of Articulation podcast doing the draw for the giveaway on the Facebook and Twitter that we did for this lovely Edge figure. So um, we had some technical issues when we did the podcast, so we couldn't do the draw then, but luckily with technology we can do the draw now. Um, So we should be able to share my screen if you want to see. Uh, You can see all of the names going around on there. Uh, If you can't see a name, it means that either you haven't liked the Facebook page or you haven't commented or you haven't retweeted it from our Twitter page, uh, Three Articulation, it's called on there. So that would be the only reason why you won't be on there. And um, yeah, have a long, hard look at yourself if that's you. 
So uh, let's find out who's won this lovely edge figure. And the winner is, it's Haley Ditchburn. So Haley, you have won the edge figure. Um, this one here, get in contact with me, Jamie Wills, and we'll arrange sending this out to you. Um, so thanks everyone for, for liking the Facebook page. We, uh, we appreciate it and, and hope you enjoy the, uh, the podcast. I'll see you guys soon. The Underrated R Superstar! It's the Underrated R Superstar. Johnny's got his belt on already. Adam, do you want to kick far us off? Who are you popping into the Underrated R Superstar lot this week? I will kick for us off, um, or a different version of that. Uh, I have gone back to uh, my Mattel this week, or this uh, podcast, and I've gone for a basic this week. Uh, I think there's been some cracking basics, along with some very poor ones. Uh, this one, for me, has everything that a basic needs. Uh, very detailed, obviously doesn't come with anything, but very detailed, and it is Sarah Logan from the Riot Squad. Obviously, we haven't had an elite of Sarah Logan, and considering she's not in it anymore, I think she'll probably come back, but we're probably not going to get one for quite a long time. I think it fits in really nicely with the elites of Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. I don't think it looks out of place at all. I think the women's ones can get away with it a bit more than the men's ones, being basics. Uh, it's very, very detailed. It's got the Riot top on. Uh, and it's got really detailed shorts in the back of the shorts as well. And it's even got the Riot Squad knee pad as well. So they made it a lot more detailed than they needed to. Um, I was going to show you the loose figure, but as luck has it, both of my loose figures have sold over the past week on Adam the Wrestling Man eBay. Um, so, yeah, Sarah Logan, what do we think of that one, boys? Yeah, I think they've done well to um, put so much effort into the basic now that she's been evicted from the company so they got a decent representation for from her time there so congrats i think she's expecting isn't she isn't that why yeah they did that. that um so i think they, they just furloughed her i believe but she was included in the list of um of people because um well it's more of a wrestling based one but i think they were still saying her name after they had furloughed her, which means that she was sort of technical with the company because you know how petty they are, and if they release someone, they don't speak about them for years. So, um, yeah, it's good to see that they have a good figure representation of her to go with the others. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, congrats, Sarah. Mm, and um, either Eric or Ivar from the Viking Raiders. Isn't it? <laughs> we don't know who the father is yet. <laughs> it's not anything they've raided. Um, I'll go on next. I'll kick off next. Um, so as an Attitude Era fan, I've been watching a lot of 99s recently and, and um, one person that always sticks out, one of my favourites back in the day was D'Lo Brown. Um, there he is. It was the European title. Um, I think I got this off Amazon, I think, for like nine or ten quid. Um, so you're looking at the real deal now. But yeah, I think he was really good price. I think I don't think you'll struggle to find him for anything more than 15, I think, at the moment, unless someone's really put the prices up. But I really like the figure. I think the detail on it's really good. You've got the nation element on there, which fits really well with the rock and Farouk and, and Mark Henry that's coming out. You've also got the single run D logs that didn't really defer too much from the nation look with the bulletproof vest and the European title. Only flaw really is its head doesn't shake as much as I want it to. I want the full bobble head feature on there. But um, yeah, I think it's really good detail wise, really, really good. Um, I think it's a good figure. Yeah, good choice. As you say, it's probably underrated because the, the value went quite low on it. I think they were selling for eight pounds in the entertainer at some point. So mm. yeah, it was a good good pickup at the time. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if the value for it went up now that we're going to get a complete nation. Well, minus common Mustafa, which hopefully wouldn't be too far around the corner. But um, yeah, I think the value for these might go through not the roof, but it'll certainly pick up a bit. Yeah, great choice. As you, as you say, it can transition well between the nation run and his singles run because he didn't change too much. I think the head is, it's standard. It could be a little bit better for me, the head. Um, but as, as a figure, it's it's a nice figure. So yeah, good choice. Jono? Yes, yeah, so, so mine's a figure that's been, well, a guy that's been 
criticised quite a lot and a style of figure that's been criticised a lot. It's a basic Bret Hart. This is from Series 97, which is a SummerSlam series. Depicts the SummerSlam 1991 when he won the Intercontinental Championship. Anyone knows me, I'm a big fan of Bret, so I believe this is one of the best basics that we've ever made. The head scan is actually pretty good, in my opinion. It's so we've got head. a decent decent head scan of Brett on a basic. I love this one. I think it's brilliant. It is decent. I think that the, I think my local B&M still has them. Is that the series that had Stephanie, Shane, Batiste? It's it's a SummerSlam style. It was yeah. um, basic series 97, but it was a SummerSlam packaging. Yeah, yeah, I think the local BM still got them. But yeah, I think the, the hair in the face again is the only flaw on it. But um, yeah. Not the, the face is really good. I think the hair is actually done well with a bit in front. It's not like it's completely over the face. Uh, they've done really well on the face and the hair, in my opinion. Antenna, yeah. Um, yeah, I think overall the, the pink is a good pink, which is um, probably not easy to do according to the recent releases. But yeah, the, the colour definitely makes that figure pop. The hair isn't as thick, I don't think. It's not one really thick strand that's coming down over the face, which makes it which makes it much better. I've not seen the face uh, close up. I'll have to check that one out to see if I completely agree with you on that one. It's got, it goes a bit blurry, unfortunately, on that one. Um, but as a figure, it looks pretty sweet. It doesn't look like... Um, what's that guy called from Howard Stern? As a lot of other Brett figures do. I think it's, it's just, uh, this is the best Brett head scan we've seen. I think a lot of people buy this one, put it on the other figures. Put the head, uh, pop the head off and put it on the other figures. Wow. Yeah, two, two basics this week. Um, spoiling us. But, um, yeah, I think in general, the basics line, um, also I only collect elites, only because I like the accessories and stuff that comes with it. But I think there has been some decent basic figures over the, over the time, isn't there? Many, many. Well, even that Shane McMahon one from the Summer Slam, I think it's the same series as the Brett. Um, it looks quite good. It was a decent, um, a decent basic. So, yeah, hopefully we have some more inducted into the underrated R superstar going forward. Um, next, next up, we've got the One King to rule them all final, which is exciting for everyone. Get our crowns out. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the final of the One King to Rule Them All, which is a, a tournament which, as we discussed before, we enjoy doing um, of all the King of the Ring winners, minus Owen Hart and, and Kurt Angle. Um, so we've been brought through all the way through to the final. It's been a gruelling tournament. Um, it's been some wear and tear on all of us, I think. And um, yeah, the final, we have Bret Hart versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley, which is the... Uh, Two kings which stick out in, in my mind for, for different reasons. So, um, Adam, do you want to kickstart us off as to these Yeah, two definitely. Um, it's, it's a good choice for the final. Uh, 1993 against 1997. Um, Brett, obviously, in his full King of the Ring crowning gear. Triple H in the exact attire he was wearing at the time or around the time. Uh, they're both cracking figures. That Triple H one is a very, very underrated figure just because it went so cheap. Brett's mm -hmm. slowly climbing in value. There is only one winner for me in this one. It's just it's the best King of the Ring figure, and that is Brett the Hitman Hart. It just has everything about a King of the Ring figure that you would want. Yeah, um, I think I'll, I'll put my two pence in the hat now. I agree with the underrated segment on the uh, Triple H side of things, only because it was cheap. I think a lot of the network specials were. Um, and I think it's everything you could want from an early early run Hunter Hearst Helmsley. So, yeah, I agree. It's a very underrated figure. But that being said, the Bret Hart one is is the ultimate, for me, the ultimate king of the ring. Um, the colours on it match, the robe's really detailed. It comes with a crown. It comes with a scepter. What else do you want from a King of the Ring winning figure? Um, personally, Bret Hart. Well, there you have it. We've got a winner either way. Bye-bye, Hunter. It's a clean sweep. Bret Hart is the champion. He is the king of the king of the king of the ring. Honestly, we've, we've went over this so many times over the last few weeks, so there's nothing more else to say about a cracking figure. 
perfect and a worthy winner. A very worthy winner. Um, and I think, was it the first King of the Ring, Bret Hart one? Correct me if I'm wrong, like the official... Yeah, Hart first one. official on the pay-per-view, yeah. Yeah, because before then you had Macho Man and Jim Duggan, etc. Um, but yeah, I think if you look at the ones that they have released, King of the Ring based, it was either going to be him or Mabel, which they met in the first round. But yeah, I think if you look at the detail on the crown, look at the, all the details, you can't, you can't beat it personally. Very good. Right. Um, Adam, would you like to say a few words about a little the league we are running? Uh, yeah. Um, all three of us are admin in the Fantasy Wrestling League on Facebook. As uh, John O's hat currently says, the FWL. Uh, we're just cracking on to the end of the 2020 season, getting very nervous and tense, especially in our main league, the first league, which is the Gold League. We still haven't got a clear winner on that one, so the next two weeks is going to be amazing. Uh, we are going to be doing a 2021 season as well. Feel free to contact us on here if you want to uh, get some more information about it. We'll happily send you that. Uh, and I think, Jono, you're, you are running a uh, competition, are you, next year? I'm sponsoring a competition. The Wrestling Legends Figures business, which I own, is sponsoring. And what a fitting prize we got. I was going to say we are going to, whoever won, we're going to sponsor that prize in a box form. So here it is. This is going to be the prize for the King of the Ring tournament, which we run around June. Is that right? Yeah, around that time. And here it is. It's Bret Hart, King of the Ring, ringside exclusive in the box. So there's one of the prizes we're going to be giving out. I'm surprised you didn't try and plug Triple H some more because the figure would have been a lot cheaper for you to put as a prize. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't have a Lex yeah. Express outside with Triple H on the side. That's well, an absolutely, absolutely cracking prize, and thank you very much, Wrestling Legends Figures. Um, that is very much appreciated, and if you're in the competition side of things in the FWL, you will have a chance of winning that, and not only that, but whoever wins the King of the Ring gets an automatic pass the year after into our top league. So lots of stuff on the line there. Yeah, highly recommended, guys. Um, get in touch with the group or Adam or our Facebook page, and we'll let you know how to join. I think for, uh, well, I'm in the Silver League. I'm not quite as elite as you two, but um, obviously we're having a bit of a fight at the moment between me and a few others to try and get into the the top league for next season. So I think that's, I'm in the, I'm in the playoffs, should we say, at the moment, which is... Have to cross those fingers, Jamie. Fingers crossed, indeed. Because uh, I think that prize, yeah, that cracking prize, I think is, as we say quite a lot between the three of us, it's you literally can put in as much or as little as, as you wish into the league. Um and the tournaments just are just great. We put a, constantly run ideas by each other just to try and get the best ideas and make sure they fit okay. We've seen some other examples of, of um, tournaments being run, and I think it's the way that we do it. It's a lot uh, so to pat ourselves on the back, but they're, they're a lot more detailed into it and a lot more open and shut, really. So I think it's um testament as to, as to what we do over the league. So if you enjoy wrestling, you have no reason to come over and enjoy it. It's... um. It's a good league to get involved with. Yeah, the league, the league uh, itself is completely free as well to come and join us and play. Um, we do ask for a little uh, contribution if you want to join in the uh, games and competitions that we do around the league, um, but it's more of a sharing aspect. Um, there's, no, there's no kind of money involved, which is great. Free league, a free league. What could you want? Um, right, so lovely. Next up, we've got the Retro Review, haven't we? Um, so we're back into Retro Review. Welcome back. And now we have the Retro Review, which will pass trip to Johnny, uh, who's going to take you through the Retros. Stop mocking my accent, Jamie. So, we, right, okay, let's start. It's Series 4 we're moving on to now, and the first one up is Finn Balor. Has your standard jumping action. So if you hold, actually you hold the arm and it does the, the stomp, which is perfect for Balor to do the, the stomp finisher that he does. Um, I feel that the deco is, isn't bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Nothing on the back. 
but it does have the 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 how many out demon sort of face paint. Um, otherwise, it's probably just a bit too sort of solid and let's say fat for Bala. That's my assessment. Um, personally, I don't get the sleeves. It looks like do you remember when Jack started releasing people with jackets on. You take the jackets off, and there's left with the sleeves with no jacket. That's to me what it looks like. Um, makes no sense. Does it even leave it? Yeah, they've gone too far up, haven't they? Yeah, personally. That's uh, but apart from that, action, brilliant. Uh, face, good. Um, yeah, personally. Yeah, um, I quite like it. Um, I think it's a, it's a good mix of simplicity and detail because it's simple enough for a retro. Like you say, it doesn't have everything on it that the Finballer Demon has, but it does have enough detail to make it a figure that you would want to buy. Um, I also think that it could, you can kind of hold people in the brain buster move that he does or used to do, whatever. I don't know if he still does it. Um, uh, you've got an inverted DDT move that you can do. The arms probably aren't long enough, like we've discussed with recent people, but you can kind of get the motion of the move with it. Um, I, I like it. I, I the, the sleeves for me are fine. Yeah, it's T Rex arms. <laughs> no, this is the no, one that no, actually no. doesn't really want to work properly. It's a little bit stiff. Oh, is it the 1916? Is that the move you're referring to? With the yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Pick and pick it. I don't think he was doing it when this was released as March. But um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll kick off the ratings. I'll start with a steady 7.2. Good, I'm under prepared again. Excuse me. I'll, I'll move on then. Uh, Jamie, 7.2. I actually really like this one. Uh, it's one of, one of the better retros for me. A uh, good mix of detail and simplicity. I'm going to go 7.6. Even with the sleeves. Even with the sleeves. I got to admit, Jamie did put me off a little bit on the sleeves, so I'm going to reduce it from what I originally had as an 8 to a 7.5, but still a very good figure. So, yeah, not a bad average score, that one. Certainly not. Let's move on. We have... I think Jamie might want to say his little interesting bit of information before this one. Oh, okay. Well, originally, um, it was supposed to be Enzo Amore in the line. It was supposed to have Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Ric Flair, and Enzo. Um, it was announced, well, he was released at the start of 2018, I think January to be exact, um, which is before any of the lines came out. So there's a picture of all of the lines together up to season four, series four. Um, they were replaced last minute with Kevin Owens, um, and there we have there. So yeah, it's supposed to be Enzo, which um, sadly was released at the time, but it would have been a good figure. Enzo got zero dime. Zero dime. <laughs> um, yeah. There's probably a prototype out there somewhere. Yeah, didn't um, Matt Cardona have them? Oh, I think he had them at one point. I'm not sure if he gave them away. Wouldn't surprise me. So yeah, this is the Kevin Owens. It's simply a repaint of the Series 1. This one says fight Owens fight and actually has an added addition of a little logo on the back. So it's a small update, but essentially the same figure. What do you think? Um, Adam, you kick us off? I started off first last time. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much more to add. It's, it's the same. Um, obviously they had to because they had to rush one out. Um, we didn't rate it highly on the first one um, for various reasons. The T-shirt's good enough. It's one of his standard T-shirts, um, but everything else is just the same. There's no detail on the bottom half. Um, the face is too young for me for Owens, so not great. Yeah, I think an anagram of the back of his shirt, it's okay. Um, I think that's the only thing I can really say about it. It's just a repaint, isn't it? It is. So my notes on this was that I feel I scored it a little bit lower the first time round. I give it a 4.5, which, I, to be honest, for its action, which is almost like perfect for Owens, and the sculpt, which is made for Owens, I, I feel I was a little bit harsh on that. So I, I'm going to kick off the score. I went 4.5 last time. I feel I need to, to do a little bit better, so I'm going to give him a 5.5 this time round. Adam, 
Yeah. Um, to be honest, I'm putting myself under pressure here because I've got no idea what I gave him in the in the previous round. But I'm going to go. Say that again. You gave him a six. I gave him a six. Um, it, it's it's just a repaint and it's not needed, so it's going to go lower than that for me. So five point four. Okay. Um, mine's just a steady middle of the ground five. As I said, it's okay. It's, just, it's not it's not offensive in any way. Um, For information, you gave 5.5 on your first. On yeah, first. so that makes sense. Docking it five points has been a repaint. 5.1. I'm sorry. I was reading oh, one. Even, even so, close enough. Five. Bang on five. 5.0. Very good. Let's move on because this one, in my opinion, is phenomenal. It's Ric Flair in the baby blue with a lovely chop action. Yeah, personally, what more could you want? I think they smashed out of the park with this. Um, the blue, really good. The boots, the knee pads, really good. If they, if they, any of them come with accessories, it, this would have come with a robe, but they didn't keep it consistent. I like it. Um, yeah, really like it. Hair's really good. Face mold, decent for a retro. And that's my opinion on that. I really don't like the look of Adam's face in this one. <laughs> He's going to do uh, no, something no. I'm not going to be it, happy with. <laughs> it, it's not as bad as you think. Um, the the colours on it is great for me. Really good choice for the retro. Really stands out, even though it's quite a basic looking retro. The chop action I've written down was a great choice for Ric Flair. The hair is fantastic. It's really well moulded and looking. I don't think the face is good. I think the face is weird. It's got a very weird look about it. Um, that's what loses it marks for me. Well, my notes is action's perfect. They've actually made this one specifically for Flair because of the backhand chop, whereas before they were doing coming from this side. So they reversed the action. The the pants are fine. The the knee pads are fine. They're exactly what you need to be. I think the head the head's not offensive. I think it's pretty good. Hair's good, and yeah, I'm I'm very happy with that one. I'm going to keep my score till last on this one. Um, I'll start then. I think I can't find a fault in the figure, really. Um, I, I agree. I think face-wise, it's, it's good. I like the face. I think he's sort of mid-woo, but sort of not doing a woo. Um, I think he had anything. just maybe shut his mouth. But, yeah, 8.9 for me. Good score. Adam? Yeah, it does everything it says on the turn for a retro, except I don't like the face, so I'm going to knock it a couple of marks off for the face, so it'll be a straight eight for me. Okay, for me, this is um, certainly the best one we've come across. I don't know if it's going to be the best retro for, of all time for me, but it's certainly up there, and it's a 9.3. Wow. Ex excellent figure. The only reason I would maybe not score higher is because of, there's other figures from other lines that are better than this one. But it's possibly the best um, retro. If we were just scoring retros, this would be a 10 for me. So, yes, next one. Our last one of the series, we have Sami Zayn, um, which comes with a halluva kick <clears throat> action to it. Now, can I shock you? This is my one of my favourite retros. Um, I haven't picked it up because I, I can't justify spending that much money on it. But um, I really like it. I think beard-wise, great. Um, Face-wise, great. Action, couldn't have picked a better one. Um, simple, but has detail enough on there to get his, uh, his tights. So that's my opinion on it. Yeah, the action, I, I don't know if this was actually just made for Sammy. Did, did they... It's obviously the first one that comes with action, so I don't know whether they've, they've well, made this one specifically. I mean, him and Sheamus are the only two, aren't they? Yeah, but obviously this one came first. first. So is this made for him? Perhaps. Um, the other good point is that you've got these arms that and legs, which are articulated, so you can do a lot of moves with this one. So it's possibly the best sort of action we've come across that, and pause from a retro. There's quite a lot of detail as well. It's got one, two, three, four, five points of um, decoration on the pants as well. 
So compare that to the other retro figures, we, we're only seeing one or two. So it's very good. And the face, I believe it's just exactly the same ones that we used on the, the basics slash elite. So I think it's a cra cracking figure. And I'll, I'll kick you off this time. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. What about no? me? <laughs> well, you want to talk first before scores, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant figure. Um, it's one of those that's quite boring as a Mattel um, basic, but somehow really, really works as a retro. I think because it is so basic looking. But like you say, they have put all the little things on the trousers to make it better. The face is perfect. The action is perfect. The trousers are, are great for a retro. Brilliant for me. Yes, anyway, scores, I'm going to go 8.9 for this one. Jamie? Um, 9.4 for me. Oh. It's as close to perfect as it could be. I'll go straight nine on this one. There you have it. We have scored season. You got me saying season, Jamie. Series four of the Mattel Retros. The red rolls. Right, so that's it. Well, um, last week could say, could say a quick word on last week. Yes, so we have asked the audience; they've given us some of their opinions, and we've come to an overall consensus where Styles scored six point nine six, Ambrose was six point seven eight, Goldberg five point four one, and Seth Rollins even below him at five point three six. That puts Rollins dead last. And Goldberg dead second last. AJ Styles has entered at number three, so he's number three in the charts. Probably very soon we moved down, I would think, from after the series. And and Ambrose scored sixth, so not a bad score from Ambrose as well. Lovely stuff. Well, it's, it's, Styles will probably be down in the Europa League spots, I imagine, by uh, next week, wouldn't he? Yeah, the only way is down for Styles, unfortunately. Mm. Um, right, Ali, so next up, we have the Q&A. Three points of interrogation. You what, mate? Welcome back to our Q&A session, which is called the Three Points of Interrogation, where you, the viewers, pop your questions across to us, and we do our utmost best to uh, answer them in our opinions. Um, Adam, do you want to kick us off with your question this week? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my question is from Scott Crouch, who is currently winning our Silver League in the Fantasy Wrestling League. So he's looking like he's going to win it uh, in a couple of weeks. It'll take some beating. But his question is, what do you think is the most underrated figure line? Now, he's given his answer, which is either the WWE, WWF Vendoms or the WCW OSFTM uh, line because he likes the cartoony aspect of it. Uh, who wants to take this one first? Me, me, me. Yes, I, I don't think this is going to surprise anyone, but mine's the WCW Toy Biz. They don't get enough recognition for how good they were at the time. I think they were head and shoulders below, above the BCAs and Titan Trons in, in, as far as playability and, and some likenesses. I can't say that for all of them. But yeah... Really love that line. I think it's underappreciated. It doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, I agree. Um, my one is the, so ha it's not the Hasbro line, but the Hasbro released the Royal Rumble line of um, little minifigures, um, which depict the Hasbros as well. I never heard of them until I was in Cardiff last year, maybe the year before. Um, and there was a shop that had a lot of the minifigures in. And I was like, oh, this is strange. Um, so yeah, basically that line there, I've, I've been looking at rest of the figures pretty much my whole life. I didn't never even come across them. So I think it's um, very unappreciated. The detail on them for the size is um, really, really good. They match the Hasbro um, poses, which I think is good if you put them in front of the Hasbro. So yeah, I think for me, that's a very underrated line. Yeah, you got a point. Uh, I had some... A complete Hasbro collection might be something to, to look into getting a complete set of those guys as well. Sorry, Johnny, you froze on my screen then. What was you saying at the start of that? Sorry. I was just saying that um, since I've completed the Hasbro line, 
it'll be good to get these little minifigures to complement that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll try and find you that placing card if they had them. Maybe yeah, they're still gone. Uh, my choice is the uh, Jax R3 Tech figures, uh, as modelled here by good old Rob Van Dam. Way ahead of their time for me. If you compare it to a Mattel Basic, you're looking at exactly the same style of figure for me. Um, I don't know why they didn't continue with this. I think maybe people were put off because the size was a lot smaller and thinner than the, than the Jax ones that were currently out. But they've got a lot of them have moving fingers, um, they they just they're in line in scale more with the actual body of a wrestler. Uh, you've got ones like RVD is brilliant. Test is absolutely brilliant. The R three Tech Test, uh, just a really underrated line for me. Yeah, I've come across quite a few of them by selling them on. The face scans are often very good. The High Boys Kane is still regarded as the best Kane figure that they've ever released. The only problem I've heard is a criticism. I don't understand myself, but I've heard that they don't play very well. You can't really play with them too well. But the bodies, the bodies and legs are quite stiff, yeah. Um, which could be the reason for it. Uh, the arms move the same as any other kind of arms, but yeah, there is a bit of stiffness in the in the midriff, let's say. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, think the, um, I think I had the Rock back in the day where they had the the um, just bring it the white. Top. Yep. Yeah. Currently on sale at Rest and Legends figures. There you go. And yeah. The NWO ones and the Hogan ones are quite good as well. Yeah. I actually didn't like the Hogan ones. I thought the face was completely off and there's a I'd lack of detail that. without gloves and things like that. They weren't the best, the Hogan ones, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think on the whole it's a yeah, decent decent figure line which I think it come with you can get the arena and stuff was I think we, we had a conversation about Adam about um the R three tech arena where you'd have a bit of commentary in there and so on. So you can see where they were going with it. It just didn't really come across that well. I don't think they actually sold that well, I don't think. They just they just didn't line up with the rest of their figures, which mm. was a shame because the R three tech were better. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But it's the cheap mass reduced ones that the parents will buy. Um Right, so my question is, it's a long one, um, from Daffod Mark Brown. Um, if you could personally supervise the creation of one past or present talent's future, a figure, who would it be and what would you insist on, i.e. specific attire, accessories, face sculpt, etc., etc.? Um, so the way I've inherited that question is, is there a, a figure from the past or the present that you sort of, if you could sit on, what would you insist on being the accessories for, really? Go on. Um, Are you going to go first? I'll go first, yeah. I think um, I think the Al Snow, um, the Al Snow BCA, because um, obviously they put the physical head in there. Um, and obviously they had to then put it from the shelves. I think they could have done something a bit better with that than just putting a normal mannequin head in there, which came across really badly. So I think it would have been good to sort of sit in on and design the box for that, just so it didn't get pulled from the shelves, personally. Okay. I, I, I may have um, missed the point on on the question. What I thought was to maybe create a new figure. Like, you, you're in 2020, you're sitting with Mattel. You can decide the figure. You can decide the, the scopes and that sort of thing. Yeah, so, Take this question how you wished it to, really. Yeah. With that said, I, I was going, I want to create a, f a figure that's never been made before, which is something that we've answered in the past. And I'll go with the Dino Bravo. And the insistence would be to have him in that um, Quebec style outfit with the, the light blue, puffy hair, and the, the cape and the arm gauntlets, because it's one of those figures that are just missing. And I would love to get that in the Mattel collection. Yeah, I, I had answers prepared for both of these um, just in case because I wasn't 100% sure how to interpret it. Uh, if I was going to create a new figure with Mattel, it's probably one that's going to go over you two's heads, but it's a tag team in the NWA called the Jive Tones, uh, who was Tiger Conway Jr. and Shaska Watley 
um, dressed head to toe in top and tails with bow tie. They had lovely canes and stuff like that. Um, just one of my favourite memories, one of the best tag teams on the mic for me. And if I could change one like Jamie did, um, it would be the new Nikolai Volkov that's come out because it's one of the most disappointing figures for me. Uh, I would have changed it into a million dollar corporation, Nikolai Volkov. Yeah, I remember you saying about Shaska Watley. He seems to be a bit of a personal favourite of yours. I only ever knew Watley from, um, well, as a jobber, WWF, WCW. As, and he, yeah, made like a, a cameo appearance in Louis Through's Weird Weekends as the trainer in the power plant. Oh, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out now. Oh, you've not seen it? No. It's, it's quite good. Yeah, really good, yeah. Uh, mm. I um they, they make him cut a promo, which is which is quite funny. Harvey Johnson. Cute. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good episode. Should catch that. So, mm. moving on to the final question. This one's from Alan Log, uh, with three questions. Sorry, four questions in four episodes, I believe. Or well, five in four episodes, technically. But we'll cover that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that one, Alan. We'll get to them all eventually. <laughs> And and he's sick of sitting second in the Silver League and Fantasy Wrestling League. So if anyone's catching Crouchy, that's it's going to be Alan. So here's his question: There's been a good few already, but which Jack's Classic Superstar Series figures would you like to see get a re-release by Mattel? So I'll I'll kick this off. So I think we've covered it a bit before, but the Strike Force um, side of things they had a really good two pack. I think with Classic Superstars. I'd like to see that released again. Um, it'd be good to see. I think we've only had the one Rick Martel, um, which was the model one. So yeah, quite look quite good to see that. Oh well, yeah, crack, cracking choice that one. Go on then, Adam. Uh, for me, big men always make a better figure. I really want to see a giant Gonzalez. Yeah, I think we all do. A lot of these figures, you could say that. You know, Hasbro have had a good go at them. Jacks have had a good go at them. Now it's time for Mattel. You could say that about a lot of them, Crush or, you know, that sort of figure. Um, mine, I'm going for Mr. Fuji. I would like to see the manager version of Mr. Fuji released. Something that's missing from a demolition collection. I don't know if there's a way to maybe do it. Ah, nice so head sculpt. Mr. Fuji there. head right in front of me there. Uh, shrunk down to Mattel size with my own custom hat. It's exactly the sort of thing that I'd like to see from Mattel. Certainly the, a bit of face paint, bowler hat, and a tuxedo. I don't know if there's a way to maybe try and make that a two-in-one somehow to to have like a Yokozuna manager in the same packet. Might have to be separate releases, but if we can make it somehow a, a mashup, I'm, I'm all for that one. Is, um, is Giant Gonzalez, is he the only one from the streak that hasn't been released in Mattel form? Oh, it's bringing questions on us now again. No, I mean, I mean just in general, I think that that's just come to my mind now. I think he is. I can't think of anything else, anyone else that hasn't had a figure made from it. Al- um, Albert, did age? Did no, oh, no, yeah. From the 2019, Albert hasn't. Straight away, oh. you're wrong. Well, no, it's a question, isn't it? Um, True. Yeah. Is there, is there any singles person that's had a... Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I think uh, Gonzalez would be good. I think they can do some good things with him. Um, and Fuji again. Poss- yeah, there's endless possibilities. I'm just looking at a wall of um, My Jack's Classics in front of me here. You guys can't see them, but you could pick out any of these and they'll make a cracking Mattel figure. Repo Man. Yeah. How yeah, honor, honorable mentions me for Repo Man and Adam Bomb. Mm. Yep. Billy Kidman, Lance Storm. The list could go on forever. There's loads of them I, I, I love to see Mattel well, ever go on. Well, you can't be looking at a Lance Storm figure there, can you? Because yeah, famously... I can see, see a missing hole, which is why I'm yeah. putting Lance Storm on. <laughs> um, the calm before the storm. But um, yeah, that's all the questions for this week. Brilliant. So that's uh, it for the episode as well. So that's um, episode four in the bag for the Survivor Series. So um, we'll be back for the next episode and also we'll be looking at more breaking it down and seeing what the, the subject will be for that one. 
But yeah, for this episode, boys, Adam, thanks for your time, and Jono, thanks for yours. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well done to the competition winner. Oh yeah, all the best, guys. See you in a bit. The three points of articulation.